¿Todo bien? Todo bien. <laughs> Todo bajo bien. control. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Live with App 5. I'm your host, App 5. Uh, I got two special guests here today. Friend Jez and Natalie. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, the, I'm going to make this quick because Natalie told me is, no one gives a fuck. But no, I'm going to say this. Fuck. <laughs> no, all right. I didn't mean it like I, that. I know, I know what you meant. No one, no yeah, one really cares about my fuck. No one cares about my inspiration. But we're gonna, I'm going to tell you anyway, <laughs> God damn it. So when I start, it's going to be quick. I'm sorry, people. It's going to be quick. You can fast forward if you want. Um, when I started this, um, I found that through a friend, uh, Rodney and Elliot. Uh, shout out to them. They was like, "Bro, you doing a podcast? You doing that?" And I'm like, "Nah." They gave me her page. I started, you know, I started watching her stuff. I'm like, "Oh shit, I want to be that." Like, I, and she was confident. You know, her questions and her topics were <laughs> your questions and topics are like. <laughs> but I did say, "Wait a minute, I can't do that." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which is important because if anyone wants to do this, you can you can study, you can but be yourself. Um, friend Jez came when I was going to interview Primo by himself at first and I'm just looking for you know shit to talk about and Primo was on your show my man hey, Primo Valley fire yeah, Primo, yeah. Primo what a small Valley. world true story I yeah. talked about that episode oh he was he was that fucked. was a good one that was a good one his family Yonkers heavy you know the history of my mom going to his father's store like <laughs> that's a really good episode no it was fucking amazing so that's why I found you and then coincidentally I keep going down the rabbit hole. I think it was your rabbit hole. And you guys are fucking have a dozen shows yeah, together. Yeah, we've done a lot of episodes I'm together. like, what the fuck? So it's like, this is why these two mean so much to me. Because they were doing something that I was shaking in my fucking boots to do. And they both helped me. I, I hit them both in the DMs. Uh, you know, they, they, they answer. It might be two days later, but it's fine. Um... <sighs> There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. We we all busy. <laughs> and then you do an episode with her and Sin. Fire. Shout out to Sin. You know Great what I'm saying? Episode. Great so episode. I, I feel this might be going too deep, but you know, we like spiritual uh, things oh, around yeah. here. Yeah, no, I, yes. I think absolutely. that I think that you guys were 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 podcast heaven sent. Oh, I wow. love that. So the fact Stop. Hey, I'll hey. take it. I'll take it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Tell us more. Tell I, us more. I, no, the, no. I, you know, the, I'm, I'm not even joking. The fact that I'm here with you guys, <laughs> after studying you guys and watching what you did, not to copy, just for inspiration. Because right. I'm gonna be who I am. You're gonna be who you are. Because we're regular people too, but exactly. we're doing it. At least we're doing it really good for regular people. Exactly. You know like what imagine I mean? a dancer. We don't got money. Be... We don't. There's no budget for this. There's no budget. Like we're figuring it out, and we still I'm make the it. the budget. <laughs> work my ass off to afford some of this shit. A hundred percent, you know. But, and it's um, a lot of time. But thank you uh, Fran Jez for um, always being there for me, giving me advice. Uh, thank you Nat for fucking being a, a, a rant master. I am a beacon. And, be, and, be, and, be, and, be, and being yourself. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's all I got. That's the intro. I love that. This is why Woo! this is episode 25 thank and I'm, this is an honor for me Amazing for intro. them to be here because if you're a dancer and you go into a dancing school and the good dancer is already kicking ass and mm-hmm. they are what you want to be, that is the analogy that I can use. Mm-hmm. Or a rapper or whatever. So they are they were at a place that I'm trying to get to. Especially oh Frances. He owns shit. I know. Frances is a beast. No, oh, I want I wanna, He's a beast. No, I wanna own shit. I wanna have a studio. So, you know, this is I'm, I look up to both of you, and congratulations on your new podcast yes, coming. Yes, I'm having a new podcast. What's the, what's the name? Fix Me, I'm Healed. Beautiful. Um, And just briefly, you know, I know it doesn't make sense, but it's basically like you can think you're healed, you can think you have all the answers, but life will continue to humble you, and you're always going to need work. So that's what it's about. Beautiful. So uh, let's get to it. Um, I usually do Born and Raised, but when I have more than one guest... It kind of kills so much time, so yeah. I'm just keep it simple and, and do like a joint venture. Yeah. How did you guys meet and become uh, oh and work God, together? How did we meet? It must have been social media. It was. Media. It was social media it must have been. because okay. So my videographer Anthony, shout out to Anthony, he helps me with everything. We went to the same high school. Oh yes, they went to the same high school, but I didn't even know that. He was just like start looking up hashtags. Start looking up podcasts, like hashtags, like Yonkers podcast or whatever to see who else you can network with. I think that was how I found you. Yeah. That's what it I was. I had seen his stuff. Yonkers podcast hashtag. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what it was. That's what yes. it was. Wow. But I had seen his stuff and I like he showed up, but it was like I didn't even bother. But then he reached out to me 
And was, he was like, oh, was do you want to be a guest time. on my episode? Yeah, and I was like, oh, shit, I've seen him before. I don't even know where, but I know I've seen you it before. It was definitely somewhere. It and then seen... I go on your YouTube, and you had interviewed Lady Slim. I saw that. Um, that was a good one. I saw oh, that episode. Very, very and I was like, okay, he seems really... I was actually... You know what? Can we talk about it real quick? Oh, yeah. I was super intimidated. <laughs> no, super intimidated to go on his show because I didn't you know what to expect. You episodes than me. But I didn't know what to expect from you. And I had never oh, really okay. been interviewed that often. So I was like, is he about to be like an asshole? Because he yeah. gives asshole vibes. But like, I'm not sure. I can see that. But then I was like... I just went and it was fine. That was a really yeah, good episode. It was great. Yeah, you were chill. All the episodes have been great. He had so the beers far. ready. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. great. Come on. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then from then, I feel like, you know, when I was looking for guests for my show, it was like, oh, he was he has his own podcast. He's well spoken. Fuck it. And we got deep. Like we had some great conversations. Oh, I see when I was doing my, my research, I seen I seen about two episodes. Um yeah. shout out to Angel and uh yeah, there Angel was another and Yaya, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has yeah. her own podcast too. Angel the poet. Do you yes. do you but do you think that this is a small community or it's a big community? Like for podcasting? us, to, small, for, for small, so we could find each other easy with no problem. If, if you podcasting, you, yeah. If you're hashtagging yourself right, that's how I found her podcast. If you're hashtagging yourself right, it's easy to be found. Mm -hmm. Okay, a hundred percent. That's what it is. I don't think I'm. But you gotta I don't be, think I'm doing that. <laughs> you're easy to be found if people really fuck with podcasting, especially yeah. like local podcasters, because they want to find community. Yeah. You can find me because I'm fucking. I, I post 14 times a day. I don't give no fucks. But it's your hashtags. Mm -hmm. How are people finding you? Either you're running ads or people are looking through your hashtags. Mm -hmm. How else do they find you? And also the algorithm too, though. Like if I'm always watching you podcast hit clips. It though. You gotta hit the algorithm. Yeah. That's hard. If I'm always watching podcast clips, eventually somebody in my area who has a podcast is gonna pop up. Okay. Eventually. Maybe that's what's happening to me. I have no idea. Maybe. <laughs> So um, you can answer this separately. Uh, how did you guys get into it? Um, you could go first, friend. Just, um, My story isn't all that entertaining. I had a friend that actually you were a guest on that podcast too. Oh, yes. I had a friend mm -hmm. that started a podcast called The Short End of the Stick. And then he invited me to be a guest, kind of co-host. And then I was like, you know what? Like, I, In the beginning, I was against it. I didn't want to do it <clears throat> because if I'm... If I commit to something, I'm all in. Right. So I don't want to commit to something and and I'm gonna be stuck doing this shit. He was filming every other Saturday, and it was it was a That's tough a commitment. commitment. Yeah. I ended up doing the commitment. He ended up, well, before he stopped his podcast, I started my podcast. Mm. So as he stopped his, I just kept mine going. That, that's literally the beginning. Look at that. Yeah. So you got you got the bug then. I never wanted to do it. To this day, I, I know it's oversaturated, this, this field. Yeah. But I don't see it in that way anymore. Right. I see it as this is my platform. This this is my who, baby. Who I find interesting and I'm sharing with the world and that, that's all I care about. And whoever right. likes it, likes it. Yeah. Before, before you answer that, mm -hmm. you, are the inter, you are the interview finding person subject no yeah master no his guests this, are great yo this motherfucker will really go good. from how yo it will be okay i'm just gonna say the, the the last ones that i watched okay talk about it uh the golf store oh my that man. i thought that i thought Pete. was trash i'm like yeah i watch it i'm at work fuck Pete. it bro Pete's Pete, good people he killed it bro he's good people he was funny his story was dope he's an entrepreneur then the piano guy was fucking amazing. He was well, he, he, he great. Yo, he was about that one. And, yo, well, he, emotional he was so soft spoken, bro. And I'm like, where are you finding these fucking so people? Passionate. I, I'm passionate. Bumped into, I bumped to him in person at like one of those Yonkers events. There's a lot of Yonkers arts events in the same building that his studio was in. So I must have been one of those one of those events. Gotcha. So how'd you, you get into it? Now? Well, you but go you know about that factory? Well, you, you've been, I think, yeah, at, I, like I'm from, the, of, I'm from the Bronx, bro. I'm sorry. Yo, there's this factory on Nepperhand Avenue. It's huge. It's like more than a, a it's like a New York City block kind of that that yeah. length. Mm -hmm. And every floor is art studios that they rent out. Okay. Some of them are piano piano guys like like Opio, and um, some are just painters and all types of art studios. No, his his episode was fucking amazing, bro. So it's like. Uh, you know they have events throughout the year where where you can walk through all these artist events, all all these artist studios, and I think I met him through one of those, and it's yeah, amazing. You, you get to all these floors. How do you and, find and your guests, bro? They're so random. And, and, you know, that, like a story, like I just said, where I'm walking through these events, mm -hmm. I just meet people, mm -hmm. and, and it just starts from there. That's fucking amazing. And then when I reached out to him, I said, "You're, you're what you do is so unique. And that's why I want to I want to interview you." 
I interviewed him not knowing he's a poet. You don't know what you're going to get. I didn't know he was a poet, a big poet. He's known more of his, for his poetry than his piano. So all my questions were about pianos. And he flipped it on you. And then <laughs> at the end, I was like, you know, let the people know what we're, what you have coming up. He said, well, I have this, this show coming up for my poetry. And I went to the show. He was the headliner. Mm. Wow. He was the host. He was the everything. Mm -hmm. He was in the beginning, the middle, and the end. He closed the whole show. He was the feature artist. And I'm over here interviewing him, and piano. him about piano. And you didn't even know. You, <laughs> you wasn't ready for that. Ready. And I reached out to him telling him, you know, Come what back. you do is so different. <laughs> no, before everything. Yeah. What you do is so different, referring to pianos. I want you on my podcast to talk about pianos because I don't know anything about pianos. And I think anybody that watches this shit is going to be very fucking entertained. Mm -hmm. And that's why he came through, and I had no idea he was in the poetry. Wow. I no. love this shit. I, I just love it. I enjoy the Are you going to have him on again then? To I, touch I would that? love to. Okay. I have, have to. to. Touch that I part. have to. I went to go see him live. He killed it. Some of his poetry, he even had a band behind him mm. playing. Um, I, and I can't see that. I, I, I can't see the poetry. And, and a, it's insane. It's insane. And it's like it in aggressive. Both. Oh, wow. It's like aggressive poetry about love. That's it's, awesome, it's, bro. It's, it's sick. Oh, that's nice. It's sick. That's really cute. So how'd you start in, that, in podcasting? Oh, God. I, that was a great story. I can't follow up. No, it's just You know boring. what? The more I think about it. <laughs> if yours is boring, it's okay. It's just, it's, no, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's no, okay. It's no, just no, that's not a boring. fucking fire story. Like to come after that is crazy. Like what the hell? Uh, All right. Um, <laughs> you know what? It's funny that you asked that though because I think the more I think about it, because all right. In order to keep doing what we do, we always have to keep wondering like why are we still doing this? Because that's what keeps you going. Yep. So if you're just doing it for selfish reasons, it's like you're going to end up falling off, not being into it anyway, because your heart isn't really in it. What's a selfish reason? I Thinking think my, money I was is coming? Say. Money, right? Hey, yes. no, fuck. hey, hey. People but think, I, yo, hey, look at Joe no Rogan. There's no money coming yet. <laughs> How much money Joe Rogan right. got? Focus I mean, on your craft. Starts this thing. It's true. Love, but love what you what do. But you know what? I still and feel it, like my reason was so, is selfish. Now when I really reflect. Because it was all about, I have shit that I need to get off. And I don't have anyone in my life that I can talk about Therapy. these things with. Therapy. And I wasn't, I was still like kind of young. I was like, what, when I started? Like 27, 28? So I feel like when I started, I wasn't really, I knew that I wanted help talking about certain things. But I, therapy wasn't clicking in my brain. Like, I didn't know that I could do that. You know, like mm. go to therapy, pay for somebody. To me, it was always that stigma of like, if you go to therapy, you're crazy. Why do you need that? That's mm. just like, my mother would say, that's just the devil. Like, you just got to believe in God and God will get you out of your depression. And it's like, girl, you can believe in God and still go to therapy. Like, you really not. That doesn't mean I'm like being possessed by demons. Mm. So I feel like I just needed an outlet. And then when I started it, I started it with a friend of mine, but he ended up quitting and I just kept going. And I started having like real deep conversations with people. And I was unlocking so much of like things that I didn't realize about myself that I just kept going. Cause I'm like, what else can I learn? Well, let me challenge myself on this. How do I really feel about this? I never got to speak about it before. That's why I go so deep because I'm able to let it out. Sometimes like you're home and you're thinking deep ass shit, but you don't have anybody who's gonna get it. You understand? 100%. So I use the podcast as a way to let that shit out there and see if I'm crazy or like other people and feel. And your IG. You use that as well. And my Instagram, too. So when people DM me like, yo, facts, I feel the same way. I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. You gotta <laughs> Somebody post, out there is You got to like, post those stories into reels. I know. That's you keep when you're saying gonna that. I'm that's scared. That's when you're going to hit. But that's when you're going to hit. That's what I'm scared of. Because I don't. it's so personal to me still that I feel like Fear I control holds you it. Back. Fear holds me back. <laughs> no, he's right. He's right. No, but you're doing You're doing a great he's thing. Right. And as long as... long as and no. <gasps> My heart just dropped thinking about doing it. Like no, I'm and losing don't, it. And don't get me wrong. My, I, I have... I have uh, oh, my uh, God. I have... Uh, I, have <laughs> I call it cheap advice. So my cheap advice would be if you can sleep good at night and you let that out, it could be 20% of what, what, what was in your heart, on your brain, on right. your head. Because think about it. In order to go to sleep, you have to be at peace, bro. Yes. Woo. Peace comes back again. Full if you're thinking word, about fucking bills, relationship, job, whatever, <laughs> and you know what? That rant for fucking three clips or four clips or ten clips, sometimes. it's okay. Yeah. No, it feels good. I do you feel good after. Get that shit out. Yo, it's a fucking garbage disposal. But Get you know it out. what? Can I bring it to relationships real quick? Whatever Here you want. We go. Oh, Whatever yeah. you want. The floor is yours. So when you're in a relationship now, 
they think that you're talking about somebody. Oh. They think you're reminiscing oh, or you're still hurt. 100%, 100%. I, and I, sometimes I, I even want to ask both of you. Is they think is the is the problem? They, they here. think. They think. They think. They think. What are people gonna think? It's always like, and it's just like, yo. Sometimes when you're creating content, you have to have that conversation with your partner to be like, yo, like, this is what I do for me. It doesn't mean anything. Don't read into it. But like, this is how I get my shit off. You either respect it or you don't respect it, and that's it. But do you deal with that for you, like doing a podcast? Do you feel like you have to filter certain things? Nah, I don't have a filter, man. Yeah, and I don't think you should. That's honestly. the best way to when, be. Yeah. If, if, if um, I was here on on Fran Jez, uh podcast on his, we we, we did an episode and um, episode seventy three is a good one. He's gonna, he, you're gonna see. There's no, I say what the fuck I want to say. <laughs> that, that is mine. Let it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of grabbing a phone and if you you ask me a question, you might get more than what you asked. Mm-hmm. It's coming out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, but you know what? Keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? As long as it doesn't, you no, know, like you said, if if the, if the person, man or female, you know, can't handle. No, you're, yeah, because it is what it is. You're 15 clips a week. You know what? May, you don't understand me, babe. I'm sorry. That's not you know the person I mean? I, I, What I don't like is people putting their business on Instagram and those negative posts. These 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 bitches think I'm pussy. Yeah. Don't, and what the what 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 why? Yeah, it's too much. Like now I'm gonna text you. Like who who pissed you off? What happened? Don't put it on. Don't put your business out there. But um. No, but yeah, so don't give up. Um, just let it out, baby. Let it out. Or write no, it down. Let it out. Write it I down. do that too. Or record it and don't post I it. I do that too. Or that, exactly. So, I do voice notes for myself. What? I be going in. No, that's But it's certain shit that is like, I can't post this because I'm just, really going hard right just, now. Can like, you imagine being voice a, notes is nice. Yo, I like it because then I go back and I listen and I was like, damn, girl, you was delete, mad. Delete. <laughs> but it's good. You reflect and you're like, oh shit, I'm good. Let it out. Let it out back, and then you're good. Back to your point. Is either that or pay someone whatever hundred dollars a week or a month. To, yeah. That they're gonna go home no, and, like, and be stressed out about therapy. their own fucking life. No, I actually did do therapy though. I did it for two years. You stopped? But that was after I stopped. Why? Yeah. Um, so she actually left the company that was taking my uh. insurance. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you stopped because you grew. No, well, you found yourself. No, 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 no. But I think honestly, that had to happen because I was, I felt like I was a little reliant on her, and she kind of even felt it too. She was like, honestly, I'm not going to continue keeping you because, like, you're good. Like, she said you're, you're good. good. She said, I'm good. Get out of here. She said, I'm good. Don't be a fucking hater. Show no, them, but she was like, you show have me enough. The paperwork. Show me the right, paperwork. Right, 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 right. No, facts. <laughs> Frank, no. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, no, I'm not going to let y'all play me right now. So y'all both going to shut the fuck up. I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, but you <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Oh. And you need to simmer the fuck down. <laughs> so you good. I never no. in my life heard a therapist tell their Have patient. Have you gone to therapy? Uh, twice. Oh, okay, two whatever. different patients. Twice. Two, that's two different, it. different teachers. I mean, Bye. two different, what do you call it? <laughs> Doctors? Yeah. Psychiatrists? Psychiatrists? Let's, get off, let's get off the topic. Let's get off the topic. No, I'm going to finish what the fuck I had to say. <laughs> I'm a psychiatrist said she's good. Uh, I'd never she heard said that in my life. You had you've learned Everybody's enough. Everybody's a work in progress. She said you've learned enough where Everybody's you're able to work in progress. <laughs> where you're able to apply at least enough. Like I'm not losing it. Basically. I was able to coach myself out of a lot of shit. Cause that's maturity. Okay. Kiss my ass. Okay. <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> All right. I wanna know when did you <laughs> well, did you answer that question? Well, uh, the collaboration. You, you answered that already, right? Yeah. What was that? How did you guys collaborate? Yeah, yeah. And not only, okay, forget about that part. When, wh- why did you keep on to collaborate? Because you, you guys did a lot of work together. <laughs> like I think the conversations were the just conversation's good. The conversation good. <laughs> no, honestly. And you know what? It's so important in podcasting, like for me, because I ended up wanting oh, more man. of like different opinions on. So, like, I just feel like it makes the conversation better if, like, someone is genuine, they're professional, like, everything's smooth. And it was like, all right, I don't mind having a conversation with you because I'm comfortable. You're not a weirdo. You're not a creep. You know how to think for yourself. You had a whole weirdo rant. What? It's true. And then, and then, and, and then she said, wait a minute. I got to do devil's advocate because sometimes I do the same thing. I'm like... I've been watching for fucking 20 minutes and then you're going to re- fucking... No, but that's... And you know what? I Especially want the Especially being a female, too. Yeah. It's tough. There's a lot of what? weirdos. We don't know the shit like that, but for females, it's very tough. It's tough. It's very when, tough. When, when, um, 
does male or female matter? Hell guy yeah. opinion. Guy opinion on, on your show. So I love getting male male guests. You want the male because okay. I love no because it's like I'm a woman and I have enough emotions that I gotta sort through. I don't need to sort through my emotions <laughs> with this bitch's emotions. We both we both on bullshit. We both toxic. We both trying to figure shit out. I we you not gotta going balance to balance it off of something yeah, different. Yeah, I need somebody to be like, you're dumb. That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> Women are fucking toxic. Women manipulate. I need that. That's though. hilarious. Yeah. I like, but I'm a person that like. I like directness. I like people to just be who they are, be direct, be upfront, say what the fuck it is, and that's it. Can we get a shout out for the Black Cups, though? Hell yeah, 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 yeah. Live with Ab 5. Live right here. with Ab 5. Live with Ab 5. Live with Ab 5. Hell yeah. All right, so we're going to do a quick one. I said we weren't going to do it, but I need to do it. Let's do it. Born and raised, baby. We're going to do you later. Born and raised. Born and raised? Born and Yonkers, raised. Yonkers, New York, the most beautiful city in the world. I've traveled a lot. I've met, I've traveled to many beautiful places that I think are more beautiful than Yonkers in certain ways. But Yonkers is beautiful to me because I know everything about it. I know where everything is open. I know where everything is located, where everything closes. It's home to it's, me. I was just going to say it's home. It's the comfort. Mm -hmm. Yonkers, New York. Bah! Okay. I, lo I love your passion for Yonkers because my introduction to Yonkers was when I was a kid. Um... My mom, uh, her older sister, uh, let her rest in peace. Um, we used to come here, uh, you know, once or twice a month. Uh, and that was my introduction in Yonkers. And when I was a kid, I knew I was in Yonkers because the, the color of the, of, the, of the signal lights changed. You guys is green. The Bronx is yellow. So once you pass Woodlawn or whatever that border of Bronx and, and, and Yonkers is. What do you mean? The, the arrows? No. What the traffic what? light is green. Yours is green. For go? For yellow, yellow, yes. Red, yellow, green. Yeah. You didn't know that? No, I know it is yellow. Wait, yellow, yeah, green. but what are you talking about right the now? The color, like, I'm mad the color of the structure, not the yellow, red, and green. You okay. motherfuckers don't know that? Say it again. Okay. Please. In what? the Bronx, uh huh. the traffic light, when you stop. The outer, the covering. The, it's yellow. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And Yonkers is green. <laughs> no, it's not. It's green in Yonkers. What? No, it's not. I swear to God, I bet you. A, it's like I, black it's, or something. It's green. Shit. I know it's green in Yonkers, but I know it's yellow in the Bronx. There you go. That's my point. There you go. Nat. I'm over here like it's black. What the fuck are you? It's on? dirty. It's dirty green. It's dirty green. Jungle green. Jungle <clears throat> green. Yes. And is I was it? in yellow. <laughs> Do I not pay attention? Are you kidding me right now? You're no, fucking with not. me. No, it's not. It's not green. I don't know about the yellow. No, the green is real. I know here. about the yellow. Okay, you the live green there. Green is real out here. How, oh, okay, you don't go to Yonkers often, do you? Okay. Can I say where I'm from now? <laughs> we're not there yet. You're okay, not, so then you gotta wait. Don't be asking me questions about where I'm from if we're not there. I didn't ask you that. I asked him. Go. <laughs> Yo, your relationship with your parents. Um, I grew up with a single mom, so I, I love this question because I need to know, did motherfuckers go through what I went through or you had both parents happy, everybody chill? I had both parents in the house until I don't even remember. Late 20s is when they split up. Okay. But my whole life they were together. It was great. I feel like I had a great upbringing. Relationship with your dad? Right did now, you? we don't have a good relationship. Oh. But... It was a great childhood. I have no complaints. So you you can't just call him up dad right now? It's tough right now. Damn. That shit got real. It's well, mine passed right away, so you're doing better than me. <laughs> sorry, dad. Jesus sorry Christ. About that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was going to... Uh, my One of my questions was, what does Yonkers mean to you? But you just fucking... You just... I give You know what? I'll give you another lane. What Home. does it mean to you? You know what? I'll make it even deeper. The locks and DMX movement. Did that... Ooh. Did that... As far as... Because I know you love music. When they actually, well, first is Mary J. Blige, okay? What did the Mary J. Blige, then Locks, then DMX, that whole tri that whole trio, and they, and they had like a, there was gaps in between. What did, as far as the culture of music, what did that do to you as far as like, yes, you know, we have something. You know, I never cared about R&B, so I was never a Mary J. fan, but the songs she did with rappers... I loved, and that's how I know her as, because I was always a rap fan. Yeah. <clears throat> DMX was, you know... It, wait, wait, let's do locks first. Why locks first? The, what did they do to you? <laughs> they were first. They got on. We go on timeline. Well, they got on first. With me, I was introduced to DMX first, and then the locks came. Okay, got you. My bad. With me. I'm older, yeah, I'm older. Yeah, so DMX was... Everything. It, uh, that's all it was. It, it was DMX is the guy. 
and it, it's different because I'm from here. So I don't know how other people interpret it, but he's I, like I, a prophet I, because, I can, especially I, I because of because well, this is my interpretation. Nobody ever has ever told me this or or ever said this, but I see him as a prophet. He was so passionate about Jesus and doing right and God, and he was just so on that path. He pray on the spot. He'll bring people to tears. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. And majority of the world knows him as being an actor because he was worldwide as an actor. He had a run. I he think his, run. his acting took a bigger, bigger presence than his music, which is crazy. Besides that, his music was worldwide. He was incredible. He was one of the big, biggest impacts to this planet, I think. You could put him up there with Michael Jackson and Jesus. That's how I, that's how I view... Woo! That's how I view DMX. Hey, <clears throat> hey, and that is your answer. Yeah. We ain't gonna we ain't gonna talk shit about that. So then, then I started learning about the locks. The locks are just snipers. They're yeah, just, they really are. They're just precision. How do you, you feel about the locks? Razor blade motherfuckers. How do you feel about the locks versus? The, uh, mm. Oh the, my saying. god! Mm. It was, was that, it was the one of the you, most beautiful was things that in a, the world. Was, was that a world championship for you? Like you have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea because. Rap, especially in New York, it's all about the precision and everything about your precise. image has to line up with everything you're they, saying. They killed it. They line up 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. That's the locks. And for them to come out of Yonkers is one of the most proudest. They're the, them and the mayor of Yonkers are the two main podcasts I want. Mm. And I'm going to get it. I'm yeah, speaking it into existence. Yeah, it's going to happen. You have to. Yeah. You have to. The mayor, Mike Spano, Would you take and one of them or you want all three? three? Wait, hold on. Come Can on. you make those a live <laughs> show and people could buy tickets to see that? Please? Because yeah, I would want to see that everything shit. Everything is business. At the end of the nah, day. We, we could but it's just make off the happen. fact that I'm sure we mad people in Yonkers happen, would yeah. want to see that shit. Oh, everybody would want to see that. Come on. Yeah, hell yeah. I and let me fucking know because I'm buying ticket i will wait midnight I like i'm that. ready I pay for I like that. That. don't I like fucking that. tell me that because yeah, i love me some jada kids so um I'm down. this this question I, i've been dying to ask because so the answer is they're gods bro dmx and the locks are gods yeah, above I, I, yonkers I, I above did, the earth I didn't, they're gods. I didn't expect anything less I, I, <laughs> I hoped and prayed that you said that if imagine he didn't like I would have defended them. No, no, they're, they're good. They're good. They are. Yeah, I would have cool. defend, defend, defended them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so, like that. So, um, upon watching you, uh, your interview with, with Sin and Nat, you touched on it because that fucking burn yourself story was amazing. Oh. Was I, I, we're not going to repeat it. We're going to make them earn that story and go follow what episode was that? I don't even know, bro. Go to his page, follow the... F- They're follow not going to go to the page. Nobody gives go a Go to the page, God damn it. Let him tell the story real quick. It's good. Nah, Do it. come on. I don't, even, I don't even know the whole Briefly. story. Briefly. Briefly. I, man, you called me so All right, guard. basically synopsis. I, no, I, synopsis. I'll, I'll, throw, I'll, throw, I'll, I'll, I'll clip it. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, do the, I'll do the work for you guys. <laughs> you really going to do it? Because that was a good story. I, it's on my page. That's how much I love the story. I bet. Oh, man. Another bet. person's podcast on my page. Not a story. It's on my page. I like that. I love this. I it's love, I that love that one. fucking story. So now y'all got to go watch it. So I want to touch on your introduction, the reason why you signed the fucking paper, the reason why you took the exam, Fran, Fran Jez, the CEO. Woo. Where was that and how did that happen? My best friend's wife's sister's husband's, <clears throat> I guess you would call him brother in law or something. Nah, like that doesn't care. Don't worry. Whatever. <laughs> that was a lie. He was a CEO. Like, what are you saying? He was a New York State correction officer. And I would see him at family events that my best friend would be holding with his family. And then, you know, we'll talk. He's cool people. And then one day he just mentioned, you know, you should give it a try. Give, give the, just just take the exam. See, see if you'll be, you know, become a CO or whatever. And I thought at the time there was, I was never going to college. It wasn't in my, in my, my mind at all. And I literally had nothing going for me. I was working at a Honda dealership. I was in the parts department. No, no future ahead of me. The the highest position in that in, in that department was either the manager or being a, a tech, whatever. I didn't want to do none of that. So I thought about it. I took the test, passed the test, and just went with the process. 
<clears throat> went to the academy. The academy is military style, like military, military. Wake up at 4 a.m., you better look perfect, and we're going to go work out outside for an hour. If it's raining, if it's cold, if it's hot, don't matter. Then you're going to go to breakfast, you're going to go to class all day, and then you're going to work out in the middle of the day again. And then you're going to make sure you look perfect for lunch, and then we're going to go back to class. And then after class, we're going to work out again, no matter how hot or cold it is outside. Mm. If it's snowing, if it's raining, no matter what, we're going to go outside and work out for an hour. The floor was blazing. It was August. And I'm out there doing push-ups. Like, the worst, they just push you and push you. But I was 23 years old. I was very resilient. I was barely sweating. I was killing it. I passed that shit flying colors. I was one of the best in the class. Whenever the, the they had inspections once a week for, for um, uniform, my uniform passed every week. Everybody else, they had a complaint for. Oh, you're this is that. You're, you're lining up. Mine was perfect every fucking week. Pristine. <clears throat> okay. I learned about precision. I learned about, I learned about fucking patience. I learned a lot of shit in that academy, which is like, I think it was eight weeks. Yeah, eight weeks. So it was eight weeks of like boot camp. Every Sunday I had to show up in a suit. Every Friday after I passed my test, which every Friday we had a written exam about the whole week, I had to leave in a suit. Like it was the most mm. cookie cutter shit I ever did in my when, life. When do you see your first criminal face to face that can kill you? Oh, man. Is it right after that? Or there's a whole <clears throat> process for that, too? They worked in the fucking academy. The The inmates were the guys that cleaned and served the food. So we, we, we got used to inmates right away. But the difference is when you're locked inside the fucking prison and the, the doors are locked behind you, and you, it, it's levels to it because there's there's OJT on job training is two weeks you're with the CO and he helps you out and he's overseeing you after those two weeks then you're locked in by yourself with the motherfuckers now it's you and like 180 of them and it's no way and it's get everybody ready to go to have breakfast one just you yeah yeah. So there, there, there a, might be like a, a guy in the hallway watching the corner okay if you get punched in the face how fast before the guy gets there you pull the pin on the radio. The radio's around the hip. Hopefully, I don't get knocked out so I can react. If I get knocked out, I'm done. I don't know what's going on. Did you ever get punched? No, I, I never got punched in the face. Never got punched in the face. Or no, anywhere no. else other than the face? Oh, yeah, of course. Like in scuffles, the body shots and like little scuffles. But I never really had an interaction where I got punched what, what, in the face. What, no. what would you... Because right now, and this is a true story. I'm not yeah, even trying to like... I, I'm not trying to <laughs> talk about it. I'm not trying <laughs> to just... This is not fucking clickbait and, and me trying to fucking uh, add to, the, to, your, to your fucking story. Talk about it. I took the sanitation test mm. in, in, in 2019. So mm -hmm. I'm in the civil service list. Mm -hmm. I got a letter in the mail about a month or two months ago. And it said, hey... I'm reading this, by the way. Um, hey, you took the, the, the sanitation test, blah, blah, blah. You, you you fit the same characteristics or whatever the fuck they said. Would you be interested in being a CEO? <laughs> Rip garbage. I even told you about that, remember? You did. I said I said don't do it. Yeah. So so <clears throat> what for 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 people listening <laughs> that might want to take the might, job? Because because the same reasons. They're twenty one. Talk them out of it. They're told. <clears throat> what, okay, it's your opinion. We're not sh we're not shitting on the fucking CEO life. Absolutely. So you might be a badass motherfucker that want that want to just protect people or, or protect you know you know whatever from killing people whatever, from killing each other rather. What do would you recommend or not recommend in that job? Because you were a shit watcher. I was everything. Oh, so you did? You did I did everything. I was that guy. I was that guy that they knew didn't give a fuck about nothing, and they sh they sent me on the worst si worst situations. No way. Hell yeah. That's the worst. I was that. I was the suicide watch guy. I was the shit watch guy. I was the rover guy. The rover guy is when anything pops off, you run to it. So for three p.m. to eleven p.m., and if anything pops off and you hear it on the radio, you're the number one person to respond. I was that guy. I was the shit watch guy. The suicide watch guy. I was that guy. And how many that years we talking anything. about? I was in there eight and a half. So I would recommend nobody take that job because time is the most valuable thing we have and there's no point of locking yourself away for a paycheck and the paycheck is not worth it. And it's it. like essentially like you're in jail. Straight up. Like and that's up. like heard, mentally like that fucks with I, you. I heard out of a, a retirement is what, 2025? 
Now they push it to 30. Okay, 30. If you if you do 30 years, as far as being a prisoner, what, what would you say? You did 10 years in jail? 15? Compared to a prisoner doing 30? Yeah. Because you get to go home. But if we have to add it up, you did a 30-year go-home bid. But what's the, the I, I, I mean, my opinion, I would say you did 10 years in jail. Yeah, I, I would narrow it down to 10 to 15 because there's a lot of overtime, mandatory overtime. You did a horrible job. You had a crazy eight hours. They could call you at the at the seventh and a half hour and say you're stuck because so-and-so called out. Same same spot. Okay, let me explain something to the people and to you guys. Mm-hmm. 16 I hours love, straight. I love my job, by the way. I open door, close door. So pe- <laughs> that's it. I am on a shuttle bus, 32 passenger. They're all nice to me. Good morning, Abby. How are you? The ones that look at me and don't say shit for two years, by the way, I've been there. These motherfuckers will look at me in my eyes and look away. That's fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, take it personal. It is what it I, don't is, care. Yeah. I got yeah. my buddies. I got my female buddies. I got my guys that talk to me about sports, whatever. I love my job. Sometimes I don't want to go to that job. You're telling me. Mm-hmm. And I praise you for this, for doing the eight. You're telling me <laughs> that you had to go to prison every day, had a terrible shift. A motherfucker just said, fuck your mother, threw shit bag on you, pissed on you, All that. threatened to cut your fucking head off. All that. And you, was a th- butt. See you. And you thought you were going to go home. <laughs> and you got to do another eight hours in that same floor. Yo, and see same, that same spot. Motherfucker? Same spot. You know what's even worse? Yes, please tell me. There's a there, there there's posts where it's like one little room that's metal with glass walls and just two knobs, and your <laughs> your job for eight hours is to open this gate, let people in, close it, open this gate, let people through, no, close stop. it. Eight hours. With a button or you yourself? It's knobs, and they walk through. Oh, it's a control. I got you. I got you. And then they call you and say, oh, you, you, you're stuck. You got to do that for eight more hours. <laughs> Yo, those are the crazy ones. I felt claustrophobic hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just made me feel like I couldn't 16 breathe. 16 hours of... T- <laughs> Yo, it's the craziest shit. That's the mind. No fuck. wonder why you don't give a fuck about nothing. <laughs> oh, I'm chill- I'm in the real world. We chilling out here. Yo, that was a good wake up <laughs> call for you. You enjoy life. Now I get it. Now I get why you laugh and you turn red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chilling. Uh, we're gonna end it. We're gonna end it here. And if it's personal, you don't have to answer it. But why? Why did you leave the job? So, it this is a deep. This is going to be a good one. This is why I said if it's personal, you don't have to, but if you want to. Oh, no, it's not personal at all. Okay. Well, it's personal enough that I want to share because I can help people with this shit. Yes. So I was living a stupid life at the moment. I was into partying, just drinking and partying. Every, literally seven days a week, I was looking for a party. A way out from the job? After work. Yeah. You need you need to vent and get it out. Looking back, that's what it was. Okay. But at the moment it was just me liking the nightlife. Gotcha. I just want to go party every night. And just chaos every night. Every night. Chaos. So chaos to chaos. It's like I was numbing myself. Looking back, I guess I was just numbing myself. So every night I'm out partying, partying, partying. And what what was the question? Why did you leave the job? Why yeah. did I leave? Okay. So I met this guy and we became friends, and he became my roommate, Emmanuel Gruyong. Good people. He, it's crazy because I try to preach to him how he helped me so much, and he, he just doesn't even fathom it. He was always into self-development and all that stuff, and I had no idea about that. My life was prison, my daughter, and chaos in the nighttime for 10 years straight. Wow. I met this guy and he was into self-development. He was into meditation. He was into podcasts and all this doing better. And I had no idea. Oh, wow. I would invite him to come party and go to the bar and stuff. And he was always into that stuff. So when I started opening my mind into that, he actually became my roommate. Thankfully, looking back, <laughs> then I started really seeing his lifestyle. He'll go to sleep early and he'll, he'll listen to podcast and and audio books and he was into this path trying to do better he was very religious he's christian Mm -hmm. and once i started opening my eyes to that 
that's when it all opened up and that's when it all changed. And in 2019, January, I handed in my papers and I realized life and time is more important than that whack ass yeah. paycheck. It's true. Yes, and, and and you know what? That doesn't even that doesn't even that doesn't even mean CO. That could mean fire department. That could mean yeah. M, that yeah. could mean NYPD. That could mean working in a hospital. Mm-hmm. You know, it could mean anything, it could, bro. What, if it you're could not mean happy, working a stop and shop. If you're not and, happy, the prison I, I realize now is in your mind. Physically, is not. We could feel like we're in a prison right now. Some people will feel like they're in a prison right now. Meanwhile, we're enjoying this mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. It matters how you interpret your situation. If I was this smart and working in the prison, I would have probably did the 25, 30 years mm-hmm. because I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm making money. Yeah. I'm, I'm chilling. Yeah. None of this is real. It's just a mentality. It's, it's temporary. I'm about to punch out in a few. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I'm like, yo, this is horrible. Yeah. I don't want to be here. This is a waste of my time. Yeah. So what, what, was, what was your next move after that? Was, you, was it a burden off your shoulders? Like, yes, fuck this shit. Hell yeah. But wait, and also... Mean, but, go, go ahead. ahead. Go, no, no yeah. because, okay, not trying to get in your business, but what do no, you no, no, do? No, 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 get in his goddamn business. What is your actual job? I have no idea what you oh. do. <laughs> oh, now? I don't then. know if it's personal. No, right now, currently. Because oh, oh. I know podcasting is not your only source of income. No, I'm not there's no income at all. I'm not counting your pockets. No, there's no income at all. What do you do for real? My day job is I work at a friend's electric company. It's called Macintosh Electric. But doing what? Like electricity I, stuff? No, I, I actually deal with the permits and everything Con Edison. Okay. For, for everything. Oh, I oversee everything. Everything permitting. I deal with all the building departments, New York City and all of Westchester County. So you have County. to like review a lot of shit? Or like visit it's a lot of places? Blueprints and all types oh, okay. of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So it's all like project management type stuff. Okay. How did yeah. you get into that though? They're like... family friends. Oh, family yeah. friends. Okay, okay. Since, since I was like nice. three years old, I knew these people. Nice. Yeah. That's dope. Those people my whole life. All right, so we're gonna get off the CO thing because um, I'm, you know, I'm as long as 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 you happy, my brother, I'm happy for you. Facts. Um, so upon my research, talk about it. You have a love for mushrooms. Oh my God, I do. Please explain again, because that that was that platform. What? Absolutely. What? What? For people. Me never tried a mushroom. You ever tried a mushroom? Okay. For oh, us you guys. And the, for us and the people. Not not saying that we're promoting drugs or mushrooms, but absolutely not. What did it do for you as far as? And, and would you still do it today? I still do it every you know every, every few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the <laughs> thing is, <laughs> mushrooms, psilocybin, it rewires your brain. Right now, our brains are set to the way they were set from how we were raised. All of the input we've received from media, music, news, all the bullshit is inside of our brains. Mm -hmm. I've lived 37 years. I have 37 years of junk inside my brain. Mushrooms, it's a six-hour experience. And it helps you differentiate the things that you should stop thinking about. Stop focusing on. Mm-hmm. Because they have no benefit to you. Let's focus on these aspects of your life. And it's a six hour beautiful experience. Six that, hours? Yeah. Of being high? Yeah. Holy and it re- shit. It rewires your brain. What if you microdose? Is it three? <laughs> if you microdose, you won't even feel anything. If Are you real? microdose the right way, you won't feel anything. It's just, oh, well, that's it's just, it's just William, working for Kyle you. William said, I got shit to do today. So you have to make sure six your schedule's hours. clear? Six hours is OD. I, Six hours is crazy. I that's how I do it. I, I make sure I, I plan it. You gotta plan ahead. Right. So know? so I'm gonna plan it for you. He's off tomorrow. He already did the he, he already <laughs> I'm just assuming this is what happens. He's off tomorrow. He doesn't have a date. His daughter is already taken care of. He already took her to McDonald's or wherever he takes her to, uh uh Chipotle or whatever. Everything's good. His phone is off and he goes in for six hours, baby. <laughs> Am I correct? Yo, bro. I go into <laughs> I go into a room that's pitch black. The fuck? My phone is on silent. I'll start off at like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Whenever I wake up, empty stomach, mushrooms straight up. Let is that it how you're hit supposed me. to do it? Absolutely, empty stomach, so it really <laughs> gets inside. <laughs> within an hour, it hits you. The first hour, within the next, within the first two two hours, is the the peak. That's when you're going through everything. Oh, God. And then the come down for the next five hours is just you going through what you need to go through. 
and you're growing through all the bullshit that you Okay, you're going to cry? Of not, course not. Not right now. Not right now. On the, on the mushroom. You're going to cry? I've cried. That's fire. A hundred percent I've cried. That's so fire. You, you, you're, you're meeting yourself for the first time. <gasps> you're shedding all the bullshit and you're, you're meeting yourself for the first time. That's this is deep. fucking crazy. No, I believe That's it. why it's a I'm six hour ready. experience. Let me ask you a question. I'm not ready. Does it? Because I know that, remember, um, back in our day, masculine tabs, that's different, right? Because I, I know that even alcohol, not weed, but if my girl just left me, God forbid my mom, my dad passes away, does the mushroom enhance that feeling or it'll, or, or it'll help that feeling? Oh, man, yeah, it'll be so beautiful in that experience because it's going to help you through it. It's going to literally help you through it. Wow. In the most genuine, most godly, most earth way possible. So basically, you should just go with the flow. Don't fight it. Oh, hell no. Never fight it. Because I know that tabs and ecstasy, okay. that, that's different. So can when I you say a... tabs, you say LSD? Yes. LSD mm -hmm. is very similar to mushrooms. Mm -hmm. It's the lab version of mushrooms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Very, very, very similar. But you could tell it's the chemical version. Okay, so can I ask a question? Can you get... All right, again, we're not promoting drug usage never, at all. Never, never. This is his but, story. The, what he right. does. Don't buy what mushrooms tomorrow, motherfucker. What would you recommend to people who might be interested to help them not fight it and to ride the wave? And I'm asking because for me, I'm already anxious and paranoid as fuck. So I will find myself trying to fight certain things and I know that I'm making it worse. But how do I... How can I like calm myself through that? The best way... And I'm I'm 100 percent sure that this is the best way is breath work. Okay. The Wim Hof, you know Wim Hof? Hell no. The Wim Hof breath work is 30 deep breaths in and 30 deep breaths. 30? Breath, yeah, and then deep breaths out, and then on the last one you exhale all the way and hold it, and you you charge your body with so much oxygen in your blood that you can hold your breath for a minute, minute yeah. and a half, two minutes, even you five minutes. You want to do that while she's on mushroom? No, beforehand. That's Before. That, that's how you can control your mind. Really? Yeah. That's that's to me. I call it forced med meditation. When you're holding your breath, you're not thinking about anything but your breath. I promise you, if you do this shit, it's, it takes ten minutes can to do, do it three right now, sessions. Matt? So you can got you, right now? you got thirty in you. Oh, we're, we're drinking. Does that matter? Are you serious? Let's fucking do it. I want to see what happens. Yo, if y'all down, this is, gonna be one of the this is gonna be one of the best things. Wait, in the world. But what's gonna happen? No, there's no timer. Is the interview gonna well, get? Actually, are we gonna fuck up the interview? You have to see how long you can hold it. Well, it's just gonna be we're, we're gonna be holding our breath for like a minute. No, no, we ain't got time for that. No. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 we'll, yeah that's what we'll, I'm saying. Do, we'll, we'll do it off camera and we'll figure yeah. it out. <laughs> but that's the definitely the best way to tap into your your core and your center and your your your, your, your I call it forced meditation. If you're doing this breath work, at the end, you're holding your breath for a minute plus. Within that minute plus, you're concentrated on your breath only. That, to me, is the best way to, to hone in to your center. And then when you do mushrooms, it's, it'll be easier to guide through it because you know what your center is now. Nah, you know this nigga? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> No, but you know what? Everything he said, I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds yeah. fire. It sounds great. Yo, it's Yo. such a beautiful journey, bro. It's it changed beautiful. my life. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get life. deep again, like my intro. Get 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 as it's deep as possible, bro. It's beautiful that I met you, my brother. I appreciate that oh, because I, love I, that. I know I'm not gonna do drugs. So forget we about that. We met for the first time today. We met for the first time today. We've been talking on fucking IG forever. Oh, he gave me his number, so I guess we're bros now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you checking? I was, to, I was making sure it was recording. I was, I was like, <laughs> that I, I was sucked. like, I was like, I'm so tired of DMing <laughs> because I try not to be on the app as as much as yeah. more than I don't have to be. So I'm like, yo, just fucking text me. Like we we talk enough, just fucking text me. Hundred you know percent. I'm saying. So um, that was interesting. So we're gonna move on to your uh, Google. Eight level eight <laughs> fucking critic, bro. Mm. And if people, if you think that's just some regular shit, yeah, Google, actually Google what it takes to be a <laughs> level eight critic. This shit ain't no pussy shit. What he has achieved <laughs> is real. This this guy is serious. He has a whole different page for it. He don't fuck around. He's not mm -hmm. joking. Mm -hmm. He'll bite into a sandwich and tell you it's fucking crispy. Mm -hmm. The cheese is melting Ooh. through my yo. So let's go to the, let's go to the born and raised of that. What, what what was that about, my brother? I always loved food. You know, you know what's crazy. My mom is like the core of everything. Mm -hmm. My mom is the person that brought the camera into the house which sparked my interest into recording shit. 
she, I forgot how old I was. Shout out was, to mom. Yeah, right, for real. Shout out. I was young, maybe 11, maybe even younger, maybe, maybe nine. She went back to college. She went to Westchester Community College and she joined the restaurant management class. Joined is probably not the right word, right? <laughs> signed up, signed up. She's, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, same thing. So she attended, I guess, the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the restaurant management class. So she would come home and show us all the recipes and cook and all this stuff. And I don't know if that's where my interest in food started. I don't know if that's where my interest in food started, <laughs> but I was always in the kitchen with my mom. I don't know if it was before college when she went back to college like i said or i was always in the kitchen with her you know what's funny actually that you, that you asked that yesterday the first podcast ever here at the yonkers studio was john chapman he had me as a guest on his podcast the, oh so you're going back to back interviews about yourself my man talk about it Woo! so he asked me about pretty much the same thing and i lost my train of thought your mom went to school. My mom went to school. Helped you cook. And the camera. Shit, I lost it. Take a mushroom. I wish I had. <laughs> I wish I well, had. You're talking about your food Fuck. critic thing. The food critic thing. It was. And then John Chapman asked me something about... The same thing? I think it was about the camera. I don't know. It must have led back to my mom. I can't remember what I, where I was getting at. But, Yeah. My mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, but how, how does... Okay, tomorrow, Monday, whenever the fuck, I want to be a level one food critic. Yeah. How does one go about this? You literally just post. Photos with a description of, of what you experience. Can I talk shit? Or I gotta, or I gotta, oh, I got to say everything's good. Honesty yeah. is the best policy. Honesty is the best so policy. So, they're not going to judge you saying this no. hamburger tastes like shit. If you're being honest, Google doesn't care. Okay. And that's also your opinion. So. Yeah, Google okay. wants honesty. Yeah, like. Just straight up, just do it. There's one place. You know, you super YO, I'm super BX. Oh, all right. Let's talk you about it. You went to La Lechonera, bro. Oh, my God. That, I, that, is, my, that is my house. My man's an alcoholic, bro. I, I, I bring him. <laughs> Bacardi? No, no, nah, I don't go that deep. I bring. I, 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 I don't want. I want the people to still eat. He, My he, man, he might cut his drunk, fucking arm off, bro. <laughs> no, no. Be, be, by the way, uh, La Lechonera is on one five two in Wales, and if I'm mistaken, my bad. Lechonera his name is his name is his name is Piranha. When I get there, he loves me because I'm coming with the six pack. Uh, there you go. And not and not even to skip the line. <laughs> Everyone waits online. I'm not looking for favoritism. And have you been to La Piranha? Never. Fire. You like lechon? Yeah, of course. Oh, Nigga. Man. For real? Nigga. So then we I gotta go. Yeah. yeah Put yeah. it this way. Okay. It's an experience. Let me tell you it's something. It's an experience. And I'm gonna still ask you about your experience, but I'm gonna give her a quick uh so the meat is pork, it's no big deal. Seasoning is amazing. It's not fat. You know what it is? It's not even the rice. It's not even the pulpo. It's not even the the side. I took my mother there. She is from Puerto Rico. She grew up killing the pig. There she grew go. up st stabbing the pig through the ass, out the <gasps> mouth, on the stick, the fire, from grandpa, from great grandpa. She is from that world. She told me that that skin is authentic mm -hmm. as fuck mm -hmm. because some lechones the skin is gooey mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or it's too hard right or when you bite it you might crack a mold facts this shit take over the story my brother Yo. you, who you had in the car with you <clears throat> that was my boy Issa we grew up together in Yonkers Arabic guy obviously by the name of Issa uh, he, he does like a little bit of food reviews on TikTok and you know it's all good but how you feel about the rice? It was undercooked, sadly. The pork was perfect. When I went, it was overcooked. It smelled like, uh, like uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, pegao. When, yeah. I, when I went, it tastes like pegao. The pork was perfect. Perfect. And he has the mojo. It, it's, it's incredible. It's a great experience. The only, my only complaint was the rice was undercooked. But how about and that skin, the, though? Oh, the skin was great. Everything was great. Fire. Fresh, juicy. Everything was great. So everything um, was great. No, your your you know your your food shit is amazing, bro. I I I um 
I'm like, oh shit, he's in my hood. I'm like, that's like, that's like if I if I do something Yonkers, you're like, oh shit, he's in Yonkers. Like, we take, we 100%. take. Out, if, is Yonkers not even a borough? It's, what the fuck is Yonkers? It's not the a city. borough. It's a city. Okay. City. Yeah. City so I I take the BX serious, and when when you was in my my town, I'm like, yo. <laughs> but um, I love you know your your full review. Keep going, brother. You know, appreciate. I'm it. glad that you do it. Uh, so Nat, yeah, you ready now? I'm ready. I'm a little late. I'm not gonna Born lie. and raised, baby. Born and raised, Nat. Okay, so you see how like <clears throat> you had this like strong love and attachment to the Bronx. Thousand percent. And you have that for Yonkers. Oh, I love Yonkers. So I was like born and raised in both, and I don't feel an attachment to either. So I was born in the Bronx, and then we moved from the Bronx to Yonkers when I was 15. But I always went, like, I continued going to school in the Bronx up until Lehman. I went to Lehman College. Um, I was doing my hair in the Bronx, my nails in the Bronx. So it's like, I don't feel an attachment to Yonkers. I just worked there. Like, I worked in Costco for 10 years. I was a supervisor. So, like, I have that, and then I used to live, I live there now. That's all I have. Like, I didn't go to school here. So I'm like... You guys have like a small town vibe in Yonkers. Whereas like if you went to the same high school, y'all all remember each other. Yeah. You're able to bond. I don't have that here. But I also don't really have that in the Bronx. So I'm like, yeah. You're a know. loner, a rebel. Yeah, like I That's feel tough. like the things that I relate to, like you see how you guys were able to like use the Bronx or use Yonkers as like the music you were listening to or whatever. For yeah, me, Max. it was like I had Bronx influence. Because, you know, like, whatever, hip-hop, R&B, but also I had an older sister who put me on. But I was really listening to, like, screamo rock music, like, emo shit. Like, I was, like, all over the place. Like, I don't ever feel like I have one thing that I identify with. What um what was uh, your... your, your uh, did you grow with your parents? you get along with them? Yeah, yeah. My parents are... Yeah, they raised me and my sister. They're still together. 44 years of marriage. Ooh, shout out to that. Yes, I love my parents. No, they're still very much... I'm on a year and a half for my boo, and it's like, hey, yo, 44 is crazy. What? I'm like, how did you guys do it? Because my parents are so different. Like, they're so different. But I think that's that balance is what worked out. Okay, but out. Did, did you see an argument? No, of course they argued. Oh, okay. Hell yeah, trying, they're still I'm bicker. Trying, I'm trying to see. Hell yeah, they're still bicker. <laughs> but you know what? I learned from them how to handle conflict. Whereas, like, if I can't handle conflict in my relationship the way my parents did, I don't want it. I don't want nothing toxic. I don't want nothing disrespectful. My parents were never disrespectful towards each other. Good. It was like, yes, they would probably raise their voice, get upset, get frustrated. But my father, like, never left the house and didn't come back. There was no cheating. There was no arguments about that. It was like, you left your socks here or I, <laughs> you know, you didn't listen to me when I said this. It's like little shit. Um, but just the fact that you, because you have to, and this is what I always say, like, when I look at my parents, I'm like, you know what? Like, I want my love to be that. Like, they didn't overcomplicate it, but they just continued to show up for each other. You like, yo, we're going to do this life together, basis. right? You know, they the had the same, same hopes so, and dreams. So, that what you just said fucked me up because I'm going to switch it to me real quick. Yeah. The reason why I'm 48 years old with two baby mamas and I'm working on my... They, they say, they say, both of you, you get three loves. I'm on my third. If People we, do if say we, that, yeah. If we believe, and we're going to go with... Let's just pretend we're going to go with three loves. You might get ten. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> I got two baby mamas. Love them both. Annette and Marcy. Yeah. Shout um, out to them. I'm in love now. So if we go with that theory, it's my last chance, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So can I base that on not seeing... And I know you don't know the professional fucking answer no, to this. No, of course this, not. This, we're this figuring this, this shit we, out. We're going right, to figure it out. Right. Can I base off... Cheating on both of them, being a horn dog and bone, hanging and banging with hanging both of them. And banging. Oh, Can geez. I use that excuse? And I, excuse might be the wrong word, but we're gonna go with it anyway. For me not being able to commit, the fact that you didn't have both parents. Is yeah, because I've never seen. The, that, I mean, yeah, I feel like that all takes um, a toll definitely. on us for sure. Definitely. Like, their your parents are your first example of a relationship. I've never seen one. what you just said. Right. So I don't know what that is. Exactly. So like, that's your first example. So if you have the example of like a single mom, she didn't have, or maybe she didn't bring a lot of guys holding around either. Holding it down. Mom Dukes holding it of down. Of course, that affects not only how you look at relationships, but how you look at women. You may feel like, I mean, I'm not diagnosing you. I don't know. <laughs> I have no fucking clue because everybody's different, right? But like it could affect like how you look at women. Like, for example, I'll take it off you. If I dated somebody who had mommy issues, that affected how he treated women, his girlfriends, me. Like he didn't have 
good coping, like coping mechanisms, coping mechanisms, communication, nothing. Like he hated women, low key. I really believe he hated women because of what him and his mom went through. Because she was the first example of how a woman should treat you and love you. And if you didn't receive that, it's going to affect how you treat women. That's just what it is. Same thing with girls who have daddy issues, right? They act a certain way because they have their father wasn't there for them. They feel abandonment. They're chasing love in the wrong places or people who remind them of their dads. Like, it's all going to have an effect. But it's, like, based on what you want. Like, what do you actually want from your relationship? And you're able to work through that if you want to. And yeah, I feel like you have done that. Like, no, you're no. doing the work. Well, for example, my dad was a shitty dad, but once I had my daughter... You didn't want to be like that. And I was a little bit like that because I was 20, right? And me and my daughter, episode one, by the way, live, we're at five, episode one. Me and my daughter, because that was my safe space. I'm like, I want to do this, but I need... I need a hug. It's like, I picked the safest person. Mm -hmm. When I had my daughter, I was 20, right? Okay, now she's five. I'm 25. I'm still hanging and banging. I'm still driving cabs. <laughs> Yo, they're hanging and banging. I'm stealing that, that shit. That gotta nigga. be the name of the episode. That's my at shit. Oh that's, oh, that's the name of the episode. Oh, like, what? Like that's, the, that's the name. Hanging so and banging. I'm, I'm not mature enough to have a child. Because what I would do is, first of all, fucked up, I fucked up that relationship. So me and the baby moms ain't together, right? Now... I'm doing the weekend thing, but what I do, I go pick up my daughter and take her to mom's mm -hmm. and go work mm -hmm. in my green expedition mm -hmm. or go fuck or go hang out, go hang and bang. So for the, <laughs> I would say for the first whatever years, five, six, seven, eight, I wasn't a dad. I was a fucking pick her upper and drop her off her. Talk you know what I'm saying? It. I don't even know that's a word, but that's what we're going to go with right now. Straight up. So check this out. When I had my son. Now I'm in a. Now I'm married. Now I got my son. Shout out to AJ. You're, you're, you're. Now I got a son. I'm 35. I'm, better, I'm a better person. I'm a better dad. Fucking nurturing my son. You know, mm -hmm. I'm doing my. I'm being a dad, dad. At the time, my daughter was 16 when I when I when, when my son was born. She was in the room and everything, delivering with my me. It was me and and my, and my daughter. She was the my right hand, like you know, hold the leg, and you know, it was crazy. Wow. No, true story. Um, well, her, or her mom. I don't know if you know about. Well, you know, you probably don't know. <laughs> when you no, she never had a kid, so I have to give it a. The, when you in it, when you when you have you li right, relax, yeah, chuckles. What the fuck? Why when you, are you when you're having so a kid, hard? When you're having a kid, I don't want kids. So why are you laughing? <laughs> like, <laughs> if, if you ever have a kid, it's it's the rule. The rule is two people in the room. So it's usually the baby daddy's mom or your mom or dad or whatever. So yeah, that's the rule. It's usually your mom or something. Yeah. Nah, so, yeah. don't chime in. <laughs> Please. So my, ba my, my wife's mom wasn't available. Uh, so my daughter stepped in and whatever. So now I'm, now I'm a better dad, right? Mm -hmm. And my daughter checked me. And we talk about this in episode one. Good for you. My daughter Good said. Good for you. She broke down one day and she was crying. And, and, and I'm like, what the fuck? And, and, my, and, my, and my, her and my wife already had the conversation. But she checked me. You know, you don't want to check your dad. But she grew the, she, she actually grew the fucking cojones to check me. And, you know, got me in a situation. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't leave. I'm, like, oh, shit, I'm on the sofa. Okay, good. So she was like, bro, you weren't, a, you, you, you didn't, you weren't this dad to me. You know, mm -hmm. who the fuck is this person now? Mm -hmm. And. If you know, um, you not even not, forget about the episode. If 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 you were in that room that day, I told him I don't have an excuse. My bad. Yeah, I had you at twenty. Yeah, I was twenty one, twenty two. I was still fucking trying to make money, trying to pay this truck off. You know, dating obviously. You know, just doing. I didn't have the dad fucking. I want to be a dad. You no, know, she changed my life as far as doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But she didn't change my life as far as okay, be a dad. Right. So she like her birth propelled you to like get on the path to being a right dad. Hundred percent. Because you just were working, making money. You stopped doing the street shit. Like you yeah. were just living your life. Hundred percent. And it just happened that way. But like, I mean, I don't know if you told her, but like, did you thank her for that? Because that's probably all she wanted. I don't know. That's a good point. I asked her. She's gonna watch this. That's probably all she wanted. Like, or maybe like some acknowledge. Like other than yo, my bad. Like I fucked up. I wasn't ready. You oh, could no, also no, no, be no. like, thank you. Like, oh no, I it probably, was because I, of I, you that I wasn't a good dad. I, but look, I'm a better dad now. Thank oh, you. Oh, like, no, hundred You know no, what I mean? No, now, now that's now we we got over that. But yeah. like I said, in, the, in in real life and in the episode, she was pregnant actually in the mm -hmm. episode. So we got over it. You know, I let her vent. You know. No, yeah, that's important. It wasn't disrespectful. She yeah. ain't fucking curse me out or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my, my daughter is, is like now as an adult, right? That's your, your, your daughter's 17, so you're not there yet. 
when your daughter is actually living her own life, mm -hmm. it's different parenting, bro. Now, it's like, dad, because now I have a granddaughter. So now it's me and her versus the kid. Me, 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 me and her and, and, and her man versus now it's us three versus the kid. What are we doing with the kid? Yo, Friday, take her, please. Uh, yesterday, um, she, she came back from Puerto Rico. Yo, pick me up. I can't pick you up, but I got the Uber money. Here you go. So it's now it's a team versus, versus not only that, on Saturday, I had to go to Connecticut to pick the baby up from my first baby moms. So now we're so busy on this kid that all the other bullshit doesn't matter. It takes a village. It takes a village. Definitely. But like we don't got time to be on at odds or arguing. Like, let's no. get it right. Oh, no. When me and my daughter and have a... It. When me and my daughter... She's in a laugh at this. When me and my daughter have a spat, you know what I do? She's banged it on me. She's hung... She's banged, by the way, for, you know, that's the word from the young people. When they bang it on you, they hung up the phone. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure everybody's on page. We know what bang it on you You know, is. you're young. The older people... There might be a 55-year-old Oh, okay, this. okay, okay. So Sorry, older people, oldies. Older people. <laughs> if they banging the phone on you, you got hung up on, nigga. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> so, I, I've, I've never, never went back and forth with my daughter. I let her bang... She might slip a little curse word in there. Not, not towards me, but she'll say it. Oh, get ready, brother. And I let her go for two days. Then here I go. Hey, good morning. Love you. I'm getting back in there. Fuck that. You mad? I ain't mad, nigga. Hey, good morning. Love you. By day three. Love you too, dad. <laughs> yeah, because what are you really going to do? Be mad? See, you know, but, that, but that's, that's my... That's my. Can I that. just say, you made me think of something. I'm avoiding my parents right now. And you made me think about that. No, Come boy, on. I'm avoiding the <laughs> fuck out of my Wait, parents. You owe them money? Because they're mad at me. <laughs> no. I do owe them. I always owe my parents money. What? <laughs> Hello. We all... Yo, right. you, owe your, you owe your mom money right now, sir. Nah, never, never. Your daughter owes you money? <laughs> nah, never, never. Nah, she knows I owe my parents ask. some money. She but they're chill. <laughs> they're That's chill. Funny. But, you know, so it just made me think, like... My, I know, like, if I go see my parents today, I am going to see them today. I'm going to just fucking rip the Band-Aid off. But I know they're just going to probably, like, say whatever the fuck they got to say, and then we're over it. But what'd you do to them? Not, can we get in your business? I want to know now. I did. All right. So I, okay. In general, I'm a private person. 100%. I like to do what I want to do. I don't really want to hear the opinions or thoughts of anybody. Gotcha. So I recently did something, and I let my mother know in the last minute. That's all I'm going to say. And okay. I know she's tight. Because okay. she made it know she's tight. And then my father was like, when you get back, I'm going to talk to you. And it's oh, like, I'm 32 on. and I live alone and my parents still want to be on some bullshit. Just let them get that moment. I'm going to let them have their moment let today. Them have their moment. And I'm going to be like, all right. Trash. But my mother made me mangu. Err. So she not that mad. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Today? She made it yesterday. She was like, I know you landed, so I made you some mangu, but you're coming late. So I guess you're not going to get Who it. Who the fuck is going to eat mangu at this time? That's just Everybody. That shit is hard as fuck Man, right now. Microwave it. What? <laughs> throw some milk. Throw some water right, in there. I'm having some fucking mango. Microwave it. So, um, all right, so let's let's move on. <clears throat> Your religious outlook. What what is that? Because I've seen Not what is that? No, no, no. What is that meaning? Why do you yeah, yeah, cherish yeah. that moment? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Why do you cherish that topic? And you do as well. Y'all both could comment on right. this because let her go first. Right? I feel like y'all got something to let go because even in your rants, you was like, I think we need to have a whole podcast about... Why doesn't anyone have a want to have a podcast about religion? God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking so about what, God. So what, 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 what do you want to talk about? Like, what is that? All right, well, to answer your first question, or just to make this something clear, so I... Okay, so religion to me is like structured practices. Like if you ever go, if you ever gone to an, a Catholic church, it's like you stand up at a certain time, you sit down at a certain time, you get the Eucharist, you kneel, you give peace, whatever. It's very structured. I don't want to say that I live my life like that. And I don't even want to say that I'm spiritual. I believe in God. I believe that God watches over me, higher power, whatever you want to do. But in order to live a life that demonstrates that you believe in God, there's certain practices that you should follow. And so that's what led me into Buddhism. 
and looking into Buddhist practices. Because a lot of people think that Buddhism is a religion, but it's not. The Buddha did not consider Buddhism as a religion. He considered it as a spiritual practice, basically, a guideline to how to live your life. Is that the statue with the big belly dude? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's an interpretation of him. And then, so a lot of people have read the Four Noble Truths. So those were based on what Buddha was saying. I don't know all of them, like, by memory. But basically, um, it just gives you a guideline. And you realize that a lot... So the reason why I'm not religious is because at the end of the day, all these religions want one common thing. Like, they want salvation. They want forgiveness. And they believe in something bigger than them. For me, I would like to live my life in a way where I am godly. Not that I think I'm the best, or it's not even an egotistical thing. Like, I actually want to, like, you say all the time, kill your ego. Oh, I yeah. fuck with that. Oh, yeah. And I think that's kill one of the it. reasons why I continue to fuck with Frances because he says things that is like, yeah, I'm with you. I get you. Because I'm on that same wavelength. It's like the ego will have you competing, envious, jealous, easily affected by everything, highly sensitive. You take everything personally, and then you get no peace from living a life like that. Never. When you kill your ego, you're able to say, you know what? I was wrong about that. You know what? I changed my mind on that. I don't feel that way anymore. I'm good. Like, you don't hold anything so strongly. You have a detachment to things. It's like, if it's here, great, I'm going to enjoy it. If it's not here, I let it go. But no matter what, peace is always the underlying thing. Ooh. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to be at war with you. Do what you want to do. You're happy? Great. I'm going to find my happiness. <laughs> I'm not dependent on you for my happiness. You can't be dependent on me. And we're good. Live your life. I live mine. That's how I live my life. So for me, what I want to talk about is like believe in God and however you want to do it. If you want to meditate for six hours and pray, if you want to go to church, if you want to do church online, you want to like join little like Bible study groups, whatever you need to just be a better person. That's how I want to. If you use God to be a better person and to give you hope, let's talk about it. If you use the Quran, let's talk about it. Teach me about the Quran. I could probably recite to you things about the Bible like that's what I would want to do. Less divisiveness and more like we all want the same thing. Let's just talk about it. You know what I don't like? Talk about it. When I'm going to the store, to the Habibis, <laughs> the and, Habibis? They, and they close the door because they're going to pray at 1 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. So, I want a yeah. sandwich at 1 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Why <laughs> did you just close the entire yes. store? Yes, yes, yes. And I respect your religion. I'm fucking hungry. Yeah. I have to wait an hour for you to finish you sure training do. on your rug? You sure do. Because that's what they need. Unbelievable. Everybody needs their own shit. Lunch I'm sorry. Time, I just, lunch time is 12. Don't. Why wait till 1 o'clock? <laughs> Be up earlier. And while you're at it, get a workout in. <laughs> Drink some water and then come holla at me. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, um, so, Frances, you, you also speak about religion on... Not all the time. You touch on it here and there. I do. I do. What, what, what does that mean to you? I grew up Catholic. I never... Cared about it as a kid, teen years, 20s, never even thought about it. It was always stories that didn't seem true to me, and I love true stories. When it comes to the books I read, when it comes to the movies I watch, I like based on true stories, I like realistic stuff. So the, the stories of like walking on water and splitting the sea and all these things, it didn't seem true to me, so I never believed or wanted to even look into religion. When I started this self-development journey i started looking into christianity first because i was raised catholic and i started looking into jesus and i started making sense of what religion is and it, i feel like it's it's a way of life if you follow the bible for example because there's only one religion if you follow the bible you will live a, a, a very peaceful life if you follow it to the core not the bullshit mm -hmm. at the surface, if you follow it to the core. And to the core really is about treating yourself amazingly, treating your neighbor amazingly, and just trying to do the best you can possibly do for the rest of your life that benefits you, your neighbor, and the earth. Mm -hmm. It's all about the, the right things. So if you follow it to the core, it's amazing. I still don't care too much to dive too deep into it because there is a lot of confusing texts. But I would love to dive deep enough to get the gems out of it. And then I started diving deep into just Jesus. Why is he the most famous person on earth? Why, why is he that guy? <clears throat> 
And he lived through love regardless. Forgiveness, acceptance, love. He, he hung out with prostitutes. He drunk. He, he, it was texted that he, he drank wine and he, he wasn't a perfect person. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to live a perfect guided life. He was just trying to live a life mm -hmm. where he expressed his forgiveness for anybody. No mm -hmm. matter how wrong you ever did, we're all humans. We're all here for a temporary time. We're all spiritual beings, spiritual beings experiencing this physical life. None of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. We all have these evil thoughts in different ways and different personalities. Accept everybody. We're here for a short time. I love and you everybody. see a lot of that. That's Catholicism. Yeah. But that's also in Buddhism, which is why I was born and raised Catholic. I went to church every Sunday, did all my sacraments, you know. Talk about it. And it's like, and it's great. You know what I mean? Like that gave structure and that gave me a foundation that now as an adult, I look for God because I have that background. I feel like people who didn't have that background, they don't really know where to turn to. They don't really have that guidance. They're trying to figure it out. And they go through like the the crystals. And that's why I don't follow like crystals, like the fucking, you know, all the I different. I don't understand this. So yeah, I don't and the try. angel numbers. It's like, and listen, if that's that what you need to keep you in tune, great. But for me, it's like, to me, that's bullshit. If you're still a <laughs> shitty person. Like you have crystals in the living room, but you ain't shit. You treat everybody like shit. You're not kind. You're disrespectful. It's like you judge people. It's like you, your McDonald's crystals don't mean and shit. Donuts every day. Yeah. <laughs> like you're low vibrational, period. A crystal's not gonna help that. Your lifestyle is low vibrational. Yeah, I'm not listening to what the fuck you have to say. You, 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 both of you. Not only you, but I'm gonna focus on you right now. Yeah. You are super deep. I am because things are that deep. Friend Jess, can you imagine? <laughs> What's up? Can you imagine? I'm just, I, I just did a switch off. <laughs> no, can go you ahead. imagine being in a relationship with her? A uh, hell no! What the hell? Whatever Jesus. the name, whatever the name. First of all, good because I got a man and I'm very happy, so no, I'm not looking what is, either. What, okay, we're not. And it's Beto, not. A, what the fuck was that? Hell no! You're no, too no. much. You're it's, way too much. Your level of I'm thinking. Too much you, is need, crazy. you need to be like. You need Bro, to be like. What, uh, well, you don't a character say on YouTube. You should have your own show. You should be going hard because you have that type of shine bro to be with you you have to be so, a, a real that specific guy, type of person whatever his name is have to say his name god bless you sir yo. no but you know what <laughs> because <laughs> you're, 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 you're going you're going you're going I'm going what type of guy can hang on to somebody that's going and going and going that's the hard part yo, I don't know that's, that's so why funny. I said hell no like I can't even I can't even picture a person that so would be we're gonna we're gonna move on cause I don't want I don't wanna I don't wanna ruin her mood <laughs> no. she's already mad at you I don't no I'm mad not mad I'm just like I don't even think I'm thinking that deep I feel like are this you crazy is... right now am I you Nigga, should. You, you should. don't fuck around, No, bro. because you know you what? Should. I don't fuck around because what I'm saying to me isn't deep because it's just obvious. To you? No, but yeah, okay, you. maybe yeah, to, to me. To yeah. Maybe yeah. to me, yes. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> but what I want to say is like, it wasn't always obvious. Of course. It, it sounds like if I was... Do you get? I feel like it's just common sense. If you want a better life, just do better. Like, it's just those two things. We're not judging you. No, no. I don't feel judged. And, I don't feel judged. And we're going to... I'm just saying And, and this is a great... Matter, grab, grab your beer, bro. I see you shaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not shaking. He's having a withdrawal right now. I see now. you twitching over there. Grab your beer, bro. So, okay, that's a great segue because um, I had to write this down because I, I want to say it the right way. Natalie, your topics are real <laughs> and you seem to ask the right questions. Um, <coughs> are these things that you want to know or are these experiences? Don't, this is not a question, by the way. This is me talking. Mm -hmm. The let's give the people a few. These are a few of her her her, her topics on her. Uh, what is it? Fa least favorite. Least okay, favorite. Least favorite podcast. That's the old one. My we're old gonna, podcast. I don't count yeah, no more. We don't care about that. But we're we've gonna, evolved. But we're gonna talk about this anyway. I want her to go yeah, back. Yeah. Go ahead. The work husband. What was that? What was that episode about? Oh my God! You took it back. I don't even remember. I can, I can help you. Um, yeah, tell me some stuff I, I said. Because <laughs> my opinion on that is, I don't even remember what the fuck I said about that. You said that it's like cheating without actually cheating. Because you're not having sex. You're not having sex, yeah. but the chemistry can danger. So you said something about the, 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 the work chemistry and mm -hmm. even using that phrase. Mm-hmm. 
could 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 start some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because now, ah, now he's my work wife. Now uh, you getting dressed a certain way because you about to clock in and exactly. See them. So yes. I, I don't want to break down the whole entire episode, but that was some shit. Because but that's real shit. That's real shit. So now let's fast forward to today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can your man have a work? No. Work wife? No. <laughs> but even me at 32, I'm not having a work husband. Like to me, that's just automatically disrespectful. But you'll never know. No. You do know. But it's, because, you'll it's never a work know. husband. There's it's control. a thing. No, you'll work never husband is control. Thing. No, but you'll never know as the significant other. That's my thing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they'll oh, never, never know. know. But for me, oh, it's like know. that's a fact. This again, this is why I be saying, like, you either be calling the bullshit into your life or you don't. Right? Like you're How either do you above. not do it? How do you not call the bullshit? Because it's like you have to care you have to have something to lose your reputation, your partner, whatever. Like, there's always a chance that you are going to get caught in some bullshit because the more you feed into something, the more that shit grows. So now, all right, let's say I had a work husband. Grey's anatomy. Even, Grey's anatomy. For him to even be considered a work husband, we have to have spoken a lot, a flirted. I have his number. Your he favorite, has mine. Your favorite now lunch we're guy. texting at night. Your favorite lunch buddy. Now I'm hiding the... Right, we're having lunch together. Now I'm hiding my phone if he hits me up. None of that. None of that. Exactly. No, you don't You're need none of that. It's a thing. No, you don't You're need cheating. none of that. If it can all happen at work. If you don't, you don't engage shit. at all, you cut it. It's like whatever you feed grows, whatever you starve dies. Exactly. But you need to have control over that shit. Say that again. Whatever you feed grows and whatever you starve dies. Hello. And it's true. I don't even feed into that shit. Turn over. I don't got. It's like what you said. The so peace is no more important. So there's no coworker right now that can bag you. No, absolutely not. Suck a dick, coworker. Suck a huge dick. So, okay. My segues are amazing, by the way. I also heard you say <laughs> we that cheat. Suck a dick. Today. Oh no! It's, oh yeah! It's, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 all over the place. Let's but do it. I've heard you say cheating is not even in your character. So you that's not that's even, not true. You said cheating is not even in you. Like I you said don't, that? you don't fuck with that. Right now, so I want to be very clear. This Natalie was, in her twenties wasn't shit. Oh no no no! Okay? This was, no, this research is. I was not shit. No no, this research is months ago. It's, yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. Oh, years okay, ago. Okay okay. Now yes. the way I view my and it all goes with how you view yourself and mm -hmm. this is why I have said it on the episode with me um, and Sin and you. How you view yourself is how you are in the world. So, like, if you think you deserve to be, like, somebody's side or to have a side and to be a liar, because essentially you're just lying. You're being deceitful. 100%. And you're being a coward. Because you're not even clear on what you want, and you know you don't want what you're in, so why aren't you just saying that? We just want extra pussy. Exactly. Or you're being you selfish. Want your cake you're being, you too. You're yes. being all the negative things, and it's like, for me, once I made that switch, like, no, I want to constantly try to be my, the best version of myself. I'm there now, by the way, at 48. That's fine, but you made it. Thank you. You made it. And you met Congrats. my boo. And you met my boo, by the way. Right. Hey. For me, it's like it's not worth it. Do you see how fast when I was talking to you, I called her over? Yeah. Like this is a safe space. This is my yeah. nigga. This is my no, podcast. Absolutely. And you're and you're like if if, if she and didn't that know that. That feels good. I, I, that you, feels good. Frances, you wasn't there. I, I wasn't. Went, I wasn't. Her sin and her friend were there. I went over there twice. The third time, I'm like, no. The second time, I'm like. Babe, because yeah. I didn't want her to feel like, what the fuck? I would. I would like, why the fuck you keep going to that fucking table? No, but I, I called her over. No, nah, she was cool. She was cool. No, she's dope. But she knows that you are my colleague. My colleague. podcast brethren. Colleague and podcast. Um, Let's continue because, you know, with Nat is different, bro. Um, I don't like that, do first feel? of all. No, no, no. Not, it's, but it's not. An, it's, it's not. A, 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 I'm ODing, though. No, you are who you are. No, you know. had a lot to say. No, we Always love, we love who you are. We love the fact nah. that you don't just talk about shit and don't give a fuck. You talk about I'm shit. I'm passionate. So these are questions that fuck me up, and I need I need you to go in. Okay, 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 go. Men expressing their feelings. Why is that a problem? Oh God, and I struggle. You want me to go first? Still. Go first. Okay. Hell yeah, yeah, let's get some male perspective. So, so yeah. let me tell you what I do in my relationship now, right? I would send my girl in the morning. I'm a morning guy. She's a morning girl. And we get, you know, whatever. So I'm already on my bus, 6 a.m. You know, that's the time your brain starts working. I can hear a song on 101.1 because that's the oldies, 80s fucking. Um, uh, so you get some old school music, right? Some love shit. You know, it could be whatever. I'm like, oh, I want to send that. And I'll send her that, right? So she's like, oh, babe, thank you. And then she'll send me a song. And so we'll go, we'll go through this for like two hours. 
So now two hours of sending each other songs. Not back to back. You know, two and two hours. So two, I send two, she sent two, whatever. No, niggas getting dressed. We actually working, so yeah. we can't like you know get into it. But so at some point, I feel like I'm being too mushy. So you know what I'll do? You are. So you know what I'll do? Just so. So, but this is get the men. Get out of here. This is the men expressing themselves thing, right? So now to to, to balance it out. Ah, right, I gotta go. Fuck off. <laughs> What? <laughs> I swear to God. No, so you I don't. Just, I swear to God. I swear to God. Oh, nah. Because that's the balance. The way I would go the fuck off. No. <laughs> don't fucking that's play extreme. with me. That's extreme. That's extreme, Don't bro. fucking play with me. All right, me. love you, babe. Fuck off. And she'll, that's extreme. And she'll, but right. they understand each other. And that's extreme. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's no, what whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, no, 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 no. The hunter... 100,000 percent. There you go. Shoe right go. back. Okay, love you bye. Like there you it's go. not right. it's not like understandable. What the fuck nigga no? It's I not fuck that. With her. Right. She's yeah, reached yeah, a new yeah. level of maturity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, she yeah, what? But that but back to my it's not about her. I'm doing my impression of Nat right now. Give me a second. Oh, okay, okay. It's not about her. It's me, what Fran just said, agreeing with me being too fucking mushy and you a bitch oh, ass yeah. nigga. Yeah, 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 now yeah. you know what? Suck a dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suck a dick is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Fuck off. Well, I gotta. Now I gotta. And, and, and she'll be like, and, and look at her. There it goes. That's what she'll write back to me. There it goes. Like she's waiting for that. Oh, yeah, that's cute. So that's back cute. to you. Yeah. What in your past or now or mm-hmm. what, your twenties, whatever? Mm-hmm. What do you think is the problem that men can't express their feelings? Well, I feel like okay. There's nothing wrong with a man expressing his feelings. However, I think, I just think, that a lot of men who maybe didn't have the best example of expressing their feelings tend to express it in a way where it's just not healthy. So I just feel like, and it's not their fault. Like, I'm not even going to blame men. Society in general just always makes it okay for women to cry and say whatever the fuck is on their mind. And it's like, oh, she's just letting it out. Go, girl. Women empowerment. But when a guy does it, he's either a bitch or he's being dramatic or even what I just said, they don't express it in a healthy way. Or we perceive it that way. Women, all, and I'm going to hold this accountable. Women also are not, we're not used to men expressing themselves. So we even have done damage by calling y'all bitches. Man up. Right, man up. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So I think there's accountability that needs to be taken on all parts. But I do, I do believe that we are moving to a place where men have more platforms and are able to really like, you know, let shit out. Y'all could tell me if I'm wrong. I think eventually I would I would I would leave off the okay, fuck off. Eventually that's gonna yeah. die down. But that's my way of uh, the machismo. Yeah, and a lot of it is internal too. <laughs> Cause we be open to you guys being sensitive with us, but you guys feel like, nah, I can't talk to my girl about this or I can't be vulnerable about this about this because I'm not a man. So a lot of it is also like internally, y'all gotta work through that shit or find other ways to like let it out. Hundred percent. What you want to chime in on your feelings, sir? My chiming in ain't gonna make anything productive because I always I I, I stand by this and it doesn't really add to anything. Where Fair. men can't be vulnerable in front of women because they're gonna automatically think of them as weaker. So men automatically feel like they have to be this fake tough guy. Mm. They can't be vulnerable. I in cried front of in front of my girl three times already. It's over for you. I give no fucks. Not it's over, over for you. It's over for you, bro. No, I don't believe it's over for that you. Guy. And that, that's, that's the problem now. No, that's not true, nah, it's Frances. True. Don't it's say that. She still loves me. What are you talking about? No, that's she not true. loves you, but she'll, she'll never see you as that guy that, that What's can't that be guy? broken. He can't be broken. No, but I feel like if you... Wait, 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 what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Nah, it's real. If you handle real, everything bro. else as a man, whatever oh, she thinks yeah. is important... Getting pounded out, probably. Whatever it is, it's like, all right, my man is... I get the best of both worlds. I got the gangster and I got the softy. Like, you feel that way? Yeah, I feel that way. I don't think you do. No, so I wait, feel that... Oh, okay, wait, now, let's talk about you, it. So you, wait, wait, Yo, whoa, wait a minute. Let's fuck the questions. Fuck let's the questions. I like this shit. So you're realistically, saying... Realistically, okay, women you, want the man that can never be broken. No, we want the man that can protect and provide. Period. She's... Confused. I'm not confused. Because this is she, opinion, by the way. Because I dated up, emotional men. What are you talking up, about? My dad's an emotional man. Where she seen both. Where the man was taking care of everything, and now in this era, man is taking care of everything. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. So yeah. she's in the middle of everything. She doesn't understand. That so don't mean so shit. Back to your point. You're telling me that you have to be machismo? If you were a girl 44 years like her parents, 
In 44 years, you're not crying? My father has cried in front of my mom so many you're times. Not, you're, so for 44 years... You're doing much. You know what? Let's break to that down. To be the top dog? No, he's wrong. What's top dog? What wrong. does that even mean? Top dog is like, yo, your wife is going to say, yo, my man never even cried in front of me. My how is that not? That, no. How is that a good thing? No. Solid. No. I'm, yo, Nothing I'm so could break confused this right man. now. No. Even, even if you go cry in the corner one day. It's the fact day. that you could cry and still show up as that nigga. That's what matters. Like, what no. are you talking about? I'm not. I'm never to gonna women, be like, oh, my man never I cried in front you. of me. Yeah. I'm I never gonna say that. You, so you're saying that? I promise you. You're bro. saying wrong. Ed, he's super wrong. He's wrong. He's you super. You can't no speak idea, for bro. women. You have you're no telling idea. me. I lived it. You have no idea. You're telling me that you have to keep up with every woman. Not one woman or two or three Puerto Rican, black, Dominican, no, no, doesn't matter. Two. It's your wife. Your wife your cannot see, your see you partner. cry. Cannot see you cry. They, they can, of course. <laughs> okay, and then And what? they're going to love you regardless. Yeah. So then you're a bitch? You're not a bitch, but you're not the number 1%. That's not true. That's not true. Yo, bro, think about it. Think no, about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to be that I know fucking... you don't want to think about it because you, you want to cry in front of her. You want me to be a much... Well, you're Dominican, correct? Dominican. There you go. That's the fucking reason. All yeah. right. Whatever you want to label it, but... Nigga, women Dominicans want that number don't one play guy. that shit, bro. Women Women just, want that number one no, guy. And the number they, one guy the number is one the strongest the motherfucker guy, in the world. Is the guy who shows break up when we want them. That's crazy. Yeah, okay. That is crazy, that's bro. They want a weak man so they can control them. No, that's not true. It's like, fuck, if I have a flat tire i want to know that my man can come and change this shit strong boy ain't gonna cry that's crazy he strong can cry boy, all he's doing is just change the I, fucking time you know strong what? boy ain't gonna cry yo this is a this that's is that's that co shit this is that's that co <laughs> shit that's that co shit yeah, yeah. yeah strong that. boy ain't gonna I got, cry i guarantee you you're gonna get some fucking pushback on that one there buddy anyway let's move on let's push it back friendship envy i believe that cut them off this is one this is <laughs> No, this is one of your this is one of your topics, by yes, the way. Yes, it is. It is. That's very real. Topic. Oh, oh, you remember this one? Of course. Okay, great. Absolutely. I'm gonna go first with this one. I believe that I me, I do not believe in that shit. I I got friends with clothing. I got friends that own bars. I got friends that own fucking Benzes, Beamers, whatever. It means nothing to me. Mm-hmm. I got no problem texting Frances, texting another person that is where I want to be to say help me. Beamer Benz at Bentley. Oh, what did you know about that? I've texted Frances many a times. Bro, I ain't got no studio, bro. You know somebody? That could have been him like, yeah. no, fuck off. I was like, him. yo, I might build one soon. <laughs> yeah. But my point is that even though you're at a better place, even though you're doing better than me, even though I'm doing better than you, how are you envious of that uh, person? Nah, That's nah, crazy nah, to me. Yeah. So what? Why was what? Were, what did you get out of? Um, why was why was that? Uh, uh, did you experience that, or, or you just saw something? So you know what? Okay, I want to say yes, I did experience it. But again, this this is why when y'all be like, "Oh, Natalie's deep," it all it's not that deep. It boils down to the person. Like you can look at a person's life. And already see how their life is going and see, okay, their life is like this because of the decisions they make. They make poor decisions. Then you have a conversation with them and you realize, oh, this is why they are the way they are with their family dynamic, things they've experienced, the trauma, all that shit. So it like, it's all a projection of how they feel about themselves. So it was like, yes, I went through something with someone, a friend of mine, who every time I felt like I accomplished something big. She wasn't as there for me or supportive. It's like when we were young and single and shaking ass and like, (laughs) no, it's true. Shaking ass, smoking hookah, going to this party, going to that party. Hanging and banging. Well, I wasn't banging like that. Let's relax it. Wait, wait, you you never went to a sushi stage? A who? Sushi stage. We don't talk about that. Oh, okay, good. But anyway, I'm a lady. There you go. (laughs) I'm a lady. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You listen, it is what it is. No, but you know, when you have friends who see you in that light, it's like everything's great. But once you're like, yo, you know what? I want to start a podcast. You know what? I want to get my master's degree. I want to be a speech therapist. I want to quit Costco. I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. I want to have a career. All of a sudden, you see like, okay, we're not really aligning anymore. We have nothing to talk about now. I'm over here doing this shit. You probably feel excluded and left behind by me. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it on purpose. And then you're going to act the way you act. That just comes with the territory when you're trying to elevate. It just is what it is. So I don't want to say like, oh, people hate me because I'm that bitch and you're just jealous. I don't think it's that deep. 
We don't fit in the same circle no we more. We right, and so there's gonna be resentment there. And even for me, like I felt like I was even trying to hold on to old friendships. That it's like I know we don't have nothing in common no more, and there's no beef. I don't hate you. You're still a good person, but we're just on different paths right now, and it is what it is. And sometimes that could cause some issues. So one thing led to another. She started talking shit, and then we had a moment where we were going back and forth, and I was like, you know what? Let's just be okay with saying we're not gonna ever be friends again Talk about suck a it. dick it is what it is you violated i can't forgive that i'm on this path you're on that path we're good you do your thing i do mine and that's really how the conversation ended and now i still see her to this day called you day. or not called you not we don't even look at each other all right suck a dick let's move on semen retention Ooh, wow that was one of our topics I'm, what a no, no, great no, no. First, segue <laughs> hey, the semen retention niggas is coming quick what's popping so I had a guest on. Shout out to Chris. Um, he's an herbalist and he practices semen retention. So he, if you want to guess, you should interview him. If you want to talk about shrooms, if you want to talk about the breath work, because he made me do it with him. All right. He does the breath work and he's a vegan and he makes his own products too. Let's Actually, do yeah. It. I'm going to put you on. Let's He'll definitely love to talk about it. But anyway, he had talked about semen retention. So from what I remember, because I'm not a guy, <laughs> he just felt like the more you hold on to your semen, you're like charged up. You're more focused. You're more disciplined. No, so no And you have more energy. No matter because you can't come. So he said he can still have sex, but he can't have an orgasm. Like he holds it back. Get the fuck out of here. So and, and he just wild. said like the more he holds it back, the the stronger he feels, the clearer mind he has. So just don't fuck. No, but he said he's had had sex. And then just didn't come. Or you could just, yes, not do anything. Just don't do anything. She's going to call you a whack nigga. I feel like it's the guy version of like when women be like, oh, I'm celibate. I'm not having sex. Like that's their thing. Like semen retention. That's fucking retarded. Just to move on because that shit pisses me off. (laughs) Um, (laughs) (laughs) So this is my version. This is my three questions. Uh, This is my version. I'm a bootleg nat right now. So uh, before we move on, let me me talk about that topic for a second. Hit it. Do your thing. So semen retention. My experience and my my opinion on it is a man, men are very weak for sex. Yes. So porn and jerking off is amazing Mm -hmm. every day for a man from teen years all the way up to even fucking. That's your escape. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's it's a whole body, stress release, all that shit. All that. Yeah, yeah, it's whatever. All the above. We understand it. So it's. It's like the number one thing men chase. 100%. Sex is sex sells. Sex is mm-hmm. it. So if if you, it's not even about the physical action of jerking off. It's about the mental mental strength of not jerking off. Mm. That's what I take away from the semen retention bullshit. It's just grasping your mind where sex ain't shit, pussy ain't shit. Like coming ain't shit. Co- all that shit ain't shit. Think about it. Politicians, mm-hmm. mayors, uh, oh, same shit. Politicians, you might lose your job. Mm-hmm. Cheating, mm-hmm. all that is to chase that climax. Mm-hmm. If you, if 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 whoever that got in trouble in the last week could be work, coworker, HR, whatever, what were they chasing? Mm-hmm. That 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 come, that orgasm. That that can I take her out? Can I smash? Mm-hmm. Now she went to HR, lost a job. A politician paid for pussy, got caught, whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's fucking a great point because if you could control that, you're unstoppable. It's the urge. Mm-hmm. The, control if you can that control that. Control the urge. The same thing with, with obesity. If you can control the urge, you're golden. Same thing with semen retention. If you can control the urge, you're golden. It's not about not coming. I think I'm golden now. You're not a superhuman if I'm you go- don't I'm jerk go- off. I'm golden now. You're not a superhuman if you don't jerk off. It's just you're mentally stronger if yeah. you can control the urge too. I can control the urge not to cheat because I know that me and my girl are going to have amazing sex and I'm going to bust an amazing nut. So I don't need to chase it somewhere else. Because The, the somewhere else was the excitement, bro. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I lost that, so I'm good. You lost the excitement? Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm, oh, and, and, we ain't, and, I don't, and I don't have enough money to pay two fucking dates. Fuck that shit. <laughs> so anyway, expensive. my version... Of the not of the not of the Nat podcast, Th- and this is random. We got to answer quick. Let's do it. You know what? We're gonna do one answer now nah, because you don't want to chime in, so it doesn't matter. 
Do you think it's cool to have an opposite sex BFF? Quick. Oh, God. I quick. can't make this quick. <laughs> quick. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just say no. Okay, you want to no. elaborate? Go ahead. No, no, it's fine. I'm not going to elaborate. I'm just Why not? No. no, you can't help it. Good. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. You can't fucking help it. I feel like when you're young and immature in your 20s, you're like, oh, my guy bestie, he's the bro. Da, da, da. Now in my 30s, I'm like, oh, fuck that. We're cool. That's my guy. We've been friends for a long time. This is what it is. But like calling him my bestie and doing all that extra shit, no. So right now in every relationship, if, that, if your man says... I'm not going to cut him off, though. No, no, not cut him off. If he, if, oh, We're going to use Sin as an example. I know that's a friend, and this is not happening. But, yo, I got a girl, Sin. This is my best friend. You, you, you nipping like that, that in the shit. butt? I'm not nipping it in the butt, but I just don't like it. But you what could, are you going to do about it? I don't it? know. I might not even fuck with you, to be honest. Okay, good. That's what I want to hear. Basically. Are we, are we agreeing? With, with, 100%. You're not doing it? My man trying to fuck, boy. So you're not doing it? My man trying to fuck. So if you meet a girl. It, y'all getting serious. <clears throat> Yo, I'm to, the, I'm to the point where I want to be single forever because... Single forever is crazy. Because every little thing is a red flag to me. Yeah. You even wanting to have another guy as a best friend, it's a little alarming if you want a long-term relationship. But what about a casual, not a casual, but like a guy friend in general. Like maybe not a best friend, but like she knows him. It, cool. It's just that guys all want to fuck. That's the part that turns me off, that if you're not... Smart enough to realize that's all he wants. It, it's a, it's just whacked. Okay, I got I got the answers that, that I expected. You know what I'm saying? Um, are <laughs> Damn, you, bro. Number two. <laughs> number two. Are you telling your friends? And by the way, this is the bootleg Nat episode. Not bootleg. Um, bootleg oh, excuse me. Uh, so. uh, session. Because I'm not as good as you. It's, it's, it's a you're doing great, by bro, the way. Bro, you're it's amazing at what you hey, do. You're amazing at what you do. For real. But 24 this is, episodes. But this is it. the bootleg Nat <laughs> Episode, uh, seg uh, segue. Okay. All right. Are you telling your friends how good your partner is in bed? Yes or no? I have done that. I have. With a serious partner? Yeah. Did, did but like it? briefly. Did it backfire? Did you no, regret it? it didn't backfire. Did you regret it? I don't regret it. Are you telling your homies how good that pussy is? If it's my wife, no, no, one, yo, that's a, no, no, no one. No wife. No wife. No walking down the aisle. Your girl that you've been with for two years. Okay, that's wife. Yeah, he's okay. not gonna wipe up somebody. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. He's not if it's two years deep, well, you're, you're bro. If it's the first week, and she's amazing to wife status, you're not none of friends? my friends are gonna know any details about her. I think that's fair. Okay, that's fair. They're not gonna see photos. They're not gonna hear stories of what she did in bed. Not if even If she's photos? a smut. That's disrespectful. You How? serious? Not, not like crazy, photos. but like her Instagram. Like, oh, this is no, her. Instagram. No, Instagram. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Oh, I didn't think you were thinking about those photos. No, nah, when, okay, it, when, okay. when it's a random, you don't when care. it's a, what's it, what are we calling it? A jump uh, off, uh, 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 smut. Uh, 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 hang and bang? Hang and bang. Oh, <laughs> when it's a hang and bang, everybody can see those yeah, photos. When it's a wife potential, Nobody. nobody's seeing, oh, hearing goodness. anything about that woman. Good answer. Ready? Why is the woman's wall when they get uh, this is for you, not for you. you? Well, you know what? If you experienced it, then you can answer. Let's talk about it. When my wife finally said, I had enough, there's no talking, there's no making up, she hit what's called a wall. I don't know if it's a female wall, a guy wall. I never hit, I never hit a it's wall. It's an emotional wall. Okay. This is a bad, you're a smart motherfucker. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I know, I know. So, it's like a breaking point. Have yeah. you reached that point? And what is that? I've reached that point so many times. Oh, come on. So many times. Like, women, we... First of all, can I just say, men, it's rare when a man actually breaks up with a woman. Like so we the don't woman, have a wall. I don't think we have a wall. Right. The woman has to be a complete our piece of shit. Cheating. cheating is our wall. Cheating is your wall. Cheating is but the wall But y'all still stay in the relationship anyway. Fuck out of here. It's never happened to me. If you never cheated and stayed... stayed? Oh, I think we're the other way around. I think we're the other way around. Your girl's sucking a dick. The and you patriarchy saying, and misogyny and you, and you, in this and you, room. Your girl's sucking a dick and you're saying, okay, babe, we good. He is annoying. Both of y'all, because I know you probably agree with him too. It's fine. <laughs> I've never reached a wall. No. I mean, I've never got cheated on. It. Yeah, I don't get it. So if you cheat on your girl and she takes you back, oh, she's great. She oh, forgave yeah, we you. Live. Oh, yeah, we live. If okay. she cheats on you, it's a dub. It's a dub. Uh, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I know I'm not saying nothing crazy. Oh, it so is what it agree is. We disagree. Yeah, 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 I agree. It's fine. Yeah, 100%. Like, you just got to go with the flow. <laughs> yes. What was your original question? Oh, the wall. The wall. Yeah, I feel like, so men hardly ever break up with women. 
women are the ones that have to make that decision and we be holding on for dear life because we're like okay maybe it's gonna change maybe it's gonna get better and we hold on in general women get with men and we're already thinking about what he can be how we can like build him up to be this amazing person and a man gets with us and it's like he sees how you are he sees how you look he's fucking with you if he, he likes to, you he wants to know what you've been through too he wants he cares <clears throat> You had said that in one of my episodes. He cares about your past. The woman cares about my man's future. Exactly. Fire. So we hold on to that future and the future hope and the future plans and the dreams that we said we were going to do and accomplish together. He said he's into real estate. Yeah. He said he's going to do this and yeah. that. And then he said, yeah. and then he said, and then he said, he said, he and said. like, yo, yo, I haven't heard nobody smash her, bro. Nobody ever even spoke her name. She's a good I think girl. She's, clean, she's smart. Bro. Yo. I think she's clean. I met her crazy. mom, bro. I met her mom. <laughs> It's true. It's true. So it's women, yeah, bullshit. we just um, it's all bullshit because everybody's an individual. Yeah, how people came up is definitely a big impact on who your personality is and your subconscious. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, everybody's an individual. You have to get into a relationship where like you accept that and just be like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna still rock with you. Be you. You let me be me, and we're just gonna decide that we're gonna do this together. That's really what it boils down to. Is that an to. open relationship? No, 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 not do me. No, no, not do you like that. That's Chill, what I'm I do saying. not condone. That's not what it sounds like you're saying. No, no, no. Do you like be who you are? You want to start you? a podcast? You want to be a rapper? You want to be a singer? You want to dress like this? Well, not so, cheating. Just, so, not just cheating. Art, so just artistry? Artistry, artistry yeah. or even you. You like to Yo, joke a lot. What, Maybe what if I'm they're like, not into art? Whatever that is, franchise. Whatever, I'm, whoever you want to be. That's the thing. Like, you see how your girl supports you, however you want to be. You joke, you don't give a fuck, no filter. You dress how you want to dress. You do the podcast shit. She's not trying to change you. She's not trying to stop you. She just loves you and supports you through that. At the end of the day, that's all I want from my relationship. You well, love and support me. What is she into? Me. Yeah, what is she into? Um, you know, nine to five shit. She does makeup. Nine to she five does, shit. I'm just saying, that's, I just got out, got, we all got nine to fives. Um, She's in, uh, you know, when she when she gives a fuck, because she's lately she's been like, I don't want to do hookah no more. She's uh, she does the hookah for side jobs, but she's really into makeup. Like her her page, I, I'm not even gonna try to fuck it up right now. Um, it's she does right now. She's she's trying to uh, she did like three Halloween um, things right now for Halloween parties, but she can also do weddings. So her makeup, you know, she does a little um, the nails. Uh, Petties and Manny's. So that's her little side love. Mm-hmm. But that's a hustle. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're going to quit the whole nine to five and get serious. Yeah. Which is a chance. Because mm-hmm. now you got to build clientele. Now you got to, you know. But she's into that. Like her makeup is a shit. You know what I'm saying? She, you know, it's a little side hustle. But she loves that shit, bro. Like last year, she did my makeup for Halloween. And she put a fucking gash over here, gash over here. So you got to take the tissue and the latex and put blood inside. It was like, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? So she loves that shit. So she's definitely into that. Um, so I want to show love to Sin and um, what you currently do now with the High Society. Mm-hmm. What is that, man? Because I know, obviously, it's a different world as far as, okay, we hanging out. No, we helping vendors. Mm-hmm. We getting paid. There's mm-hmm. a budget. Hello, mm-hmm. we talking about that money. But what? Wh- how did that start? You probably said this before on other interviews, but I, I, I don't remember. How did you and her get connected, and how is high society like? Because even Elliot speaks highly of you, mm-hmm. and you know he has his Thursday ladies night, and you sent him like a fucking portfolio of people that don't get yeah. that money. So what is what was that you love for? So just to be very clear, because I want to give Sin her shine. So Sin has her own events thing called Head of the Class, and I do high society. We oh, just okay. collaborate a lot. Okay. But with Head of the Class, like I'm just gonna briefly big her up right now. Sin Sin. Um, yeah. It's based on like she likes to do like a kind of like a yeah like a yearbook theme, and it's like who could be like she likes to play on the high school vibe, and it's like who could be the head of the class, like the jocks. I saw that with the jacket. Yeah, so that's her promo. But she pretty much like we both of us align so much because we just want to bring people together. That's really what we're trying to do, and like do fun events. Like we're gonna we're planning like a speed dating event. Um, I want to plan like even more live podcast episodes with my new podcast. Like just so many other things, book swaps, like more than just partying. But we came together because, and you see, okay, like if we talk about it, sometimes you're just meant talk to meet it. people. You're meant to meet people, and you feel that energy. I got you. Bro. Because in 2020, I met Sin, and she was my waitress at a spa. I went to brunch, 
And immediately when I saw her, I felt not that like I'm a lesbian or anything, but there was something about her that I'm like, this girl is cool. Like, I feel like there's something here, but I didn't know what the fuck it was at the time. I wasn't doing events. I was still in grad school. And so like she was my waitress and then I kept going to different spots and she was like my my waitress there or my juquera or whatever. So she used to, I just studied the way she worked. Like she was always super nice, super friendly, attentive, customer like customer service is everything. Customer service and professional. 100%. And then just like a genuine person. I'm like, this girl, like I like the way she works. And I don't even know why, because I've had so many waitresses in my life. So many people like hostesses, you don't pay attention to them. You order your shit and they get the fuck on with their fucking <laughs> life. Like, just give me my fucking food. But with her, it was always something. I felt like I would see her in spots a lot. It was always love. We were always cool. And for some reason, I'm like, this girl is going to mean something to me, but I don't know what yet. That's that shit right there. That's, that's, it that's, was just something about her specifically. And then I started doing pop-up shop events just as a way to meet more people and network. And then she was doing her own events. But for some reason, it never clicked. Like, hey, maybe I should work with her. You know what I mean? It was kind of one thing. She had an event. I went to it. And she was like, you do events. You be on your shit. Like, I watch you. I see you. You're focused. Like, I do events, too. Like, maybe we could talk. And I'm like, bitch, that's all I was waiting for. <laughs> like, that's all I needed. And from then on, like, we just always collaborate on events. But we have our own shit. But yeah, head of the class and high society, high society. Yes. All right. Let's end it with, uh, you know, and I'm scared to ask this motherfucker this final thoughts, Frances. It could be anything. Oh, okay. It oh, could be on. anything. That's nothing. That's light. I know. I know he can do it, but he might. I don't know where he's going to go with it. <laughs> uh, final yeah. thoughts, my brother. It could be anything. You know, it could be advice. It could be how, how, how smacked you are right now. It could be whatever you want it to be. You know, the top thing I could say is love is everything. Mm -hmm. And love doesn't mean romance. Love just means having an open heart to everything. No matter what comes your way, we're all going to go through problems. Mm -hmm. Every day we can all point out the problems that we hate and that are affecting us. But in reality... They're happening to everybody and everybody's getting through them. So we can mm -hmm. just get through them and it's okay. We're all going to experience problems till the day we die. Just accept it. Work through it. Love the experience because every day is a motherfucking blessing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Fran Jez. That was beautiful. Hell yeah. That Thank was you. really beautiful. Your turn. Oh, um, I'm going to piggyback because yes, love, great self-love that's my shit okay love you be you to, nice you need to, to put you. on your mask first before you put on your mom's mask your son's mask on a plane yeah you have to put your mask on no first. for sure so you're, you're, you, i see you're heavy on that because it's like yo i keep saying and i'm gonna always say it the way you feel about you shows up in everything if you feel like shit about yourself you're gonna treat everybody around you like shit like complete shit it's not worth it like for me it's like yo Put yourself first, and not in a selfish way either, but like hydrate, go to the gym, meditate, pray, do whatever you need to do to feel good. Like just always show up for you so you can show up for everybody around you. That's it. Fire. My final thought is um, do not be afraid to wake up. And that might sound crazy. Go to work. Obviously, you're there. Obviously, you took that job. If you don't like it, quit. Mm -hmm. Do not settle for less, is my point. Do not feel like I have to be this person's friend. I have to do a podcast. I have to go to work. I have to. The only thing you have to do is be a son, a dad. That's different. We're not talking about that. We're talking about hustling. We're talking about ideas. We're talking about things that your brain is thinking about. And back to what you said, you know, with the mushrooms and shit, like, Release all that shit, and if you cannot go to sleep at night, don't do that shit. Yeah. If you're doing something, and when you get home, like, fuck, I really didn't want to do that. But don't fucking do it. Mm -hmm. You're not in jail. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're not. The only thing you have to do is take care of yourself, be a good son, be a good father, be a good brother, sister. That's what you have to do. And if you, know, if you don't fuck with those people, that's fine. They're going to talk about you, but whatever. Just do not feel like you have, and that's actually piggybacking of what you said. If, if you're not happy with yourself, yeah. with what you're doing, and you don't want to do that shit, 
I don't give a fuck if it's NYPD, CO, fireman. It's a good job, pension. You're not fucking happy. My brother left a job that he had, what, 12 years left? And you said, fuck that. You were not happy. If you are not happy, if you cannot go to sleep at night because you're thinking about something, do not do it. And if you're trying to do something, I'm going to go back to the way I started. You want to start a podcast. You want to start a nail business. You you used to be a barber 20 years ago, and now you... If, it, if you're thinking about it, do it. Mm-hmm. If it's bothering you, don't do it. Live with at 5, baby. With Frances and Nat. Yeah. Yeah.